Three, two, one. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 262 of the KB Mod Podcast. Today is January 15th, 2017, and uh, I'm your host today. I'm not Scott, I'm Brandon. Joined by me is, uh, we have Hutch, Brad, and KD. Hey. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty, doing good. pretty good. The way yeah. you worded that, you said Hutch, Brad, and KD. Well, I said, I think we had a fourth here's member. the thing. I never know whether to call Brad, Brad or Hutch because he prefers to kind of go yeah, by Hutch or Hutchison, but he, he happens to share that name with someone else in the gaming community. So uh, yeah, I don't know how to, true. I don't know how to handle that. Cause I know, I know Hutchison and I also know Hutch. And so it confuses me and I don't want it to confuse the listeners, you know? So I feel I'm mean, Brad. We we're joined I, I by think, Brad Hutchison. I think, I think you should bank off the name association. I mean, we're just gonna go full sellout here. That's you true. Just, okay, that's you true. know Hutch, Hutch, that streamer, right? Yeah, he's <laughs> he's on the TV <laughs> podcast. There's so. got to be at least one person who actually has gotten that mixed up before, like who has thought oh, that they, Hutch is on this they podcast. Do, really? They do all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess like, that shouldn't surprise me. Oh my god. I didn't know Hutch and APL on this podcast. Sick. And it's yeah. like, no, it's different Hutch. <laughs> no. You know, um, but yeah. Has anyone another been thing. has anyone been pleasantly surprised that it's another Hutch? Or is everyone like, oh, okay. Uh that'll be our Twitter question next week. <laughs> Are you pleasantly surprised that we have a different Hutch on the podcast? <laughs> yes or no? Um on the same no, hand, I, we also have I haven't, nobody I'll go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I haven't really gotten that kind of reaction, but like, uh, I do know some of his mods that, uh, the, the machinima hutch is like, that's how I differentiate people. Mm, uh, differentiate yeah. us. It's like the, the hutch, you know, from machinima, a completely <laughs> different guy. So, yeah. uh, but some of the mods are in here. They sometimes hang out in here before he, uh, cleared them all out. Um, but yeah, he's, by association they're they're in here and they, they hang out but but no i haven't really gotten that kind of reaction before so okay well i mean i like you mm. both uh you're you're a good hutch and yeah. machinima hutch also a good hutch uh but yeah so we are joined we are joined by the not machinima hutch that's what we'll call you now that's right i wonder how many people have clicked on this cast expecting uh kevin durant to be on after seeing kd <laughs> And just be sorely disappointed. Yeah, you guys do have some name association stuff going on. That uh, that yeah. is kind of confusing. People people no wondering. Calls me David though. That's a, that's actually why uh, your picture is a frog at the moment. Um, you know, because <laughs> you don't want people to know that you have a, a gaming habit every Sunday night when you're a you know highly paid professional basketball player. That's right. Yeah, I moonlight on a piece of gaming podcast. Yeah, it's my side hustle. Yeah. Well, I I do. I did notice um, on our uh, Google Analytics that our increased traffic from Tinder has picked up quite a bit. <laughs> <he's done. laughs> oh, what so, a coincidence. So, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe maybe it's all the people swiping left or right, just reading your profile, but there's quite a bit of traffic coming in from over there, so keep keep doing whatever you're doing. I Which, might want to try making a new Twitter or Tinder account that is mm-hmm. the KB Mod podcast and see how many people I match with. Wow. Okay. Mm, so you're work. going you're going to try to embody the KV Mod podcast in person form? That's kind of messed well, up if you like are you just it, are yeah. you only gonna talk about how hot dogs are sandwiches and you know talk about Yeah, that'll be talk a, about PC games. Okay. I'd be surprised so many accounts are on Tinder of just blatant advertising, just like uh like you see bands come up or like uh and? stores show up. <laughs> yeah. Like they're just pages and they're bots. So if you, I, I was curious, I swiped right and you immediately match with them. They send you an automated message. Of course, I don't have the prowess to, you know, engineer something like that. But, uh, so you'll be actually talking to a KB mod representative if you match with it, not just, uh, okay. So you're like a, you're, you would be like a, like a business listing almost. So. Sort of, you know, okay. on a hookup app. Okay. I mean, hey, that actually sounds like <laughs> not a bad idea for Tinder to do like some native advertising where, you know, you're, tr- you're trying to look for someone to take on a date. And then let's say you don't match with anyone. And they're like, oh, you know, that's kind of sad. But hey, 
you can match with J. Crew. <laughs> <laughs> you can match with Taco true. Bell. No, it's it's actually a really good scheme by Katie Zen to bring up our <laughs> our uh, female audience. Like, oh like, yeah, yeah. If you look at our analytics, it is like seriously, it's under ten percent. It's something. It's uh, pretty interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, we do we do look at our analytics all the time. Very analytics driven here at the KB Mod Podcast. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, what is strange though? Okay, I'm looking at it right now. If we're looking at YouTube, okay, so. It breaks it down by age and then uh, male to female for each age group. So it's 13 to 17, 18, 24, et cetera. Now, everything is almost like 100% male. But for whatever reason, once we get past 55, okay, uh, 55 to 64 is 95% male and 4.7% female. Then 65 and older is 31% male. Nice. Whoa, 69% female. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> KB Mod really popular with grandmothers. Hmm. I mean, mm. we do t- you know what? We do talk about food a lot. I'm oh. betting we're hitting we're hitting some of the, like some of them just watch for the food questions. That's right. I bet that's and it. Even what, what grandmother doesn't want to put this on the background as she's baking an ice pie or something in the kitchen, right? I mean, like I mean, oh, yeah. absolutely. I, I think uh, on the ride to work. I think grandmothers are probably more tech savvy than we give them credit for. That's true. Like uh, one of my grandmas just discovered uh, emojis. Really? That's <laughs> yeah. that's kind of scary. Yeah. So it's tell like, her about the frog emoji. Is she is she is she actively using them or is she just aware of their existence? Using them. Okay. But like, is she? How is she using them? Is she using them in the common well, vernacular? So, like, is she now telling you that she's she's lit AF, or is it just like <laughs> with fire emojis? Yeah, fire, give me fire. give me some context here. No, it's just like sometimes, <laughs> uh, like Facebook, for instance, like uh, send a message, and then all you get back is like thumbs up. It's like wow. Oh, see, <laughs> I I actually do that a lot now, and I think I've I've started doing it because it's like that's how I interact with people on Slack. And so it's so mm. much easier to just mm. send. Because here's the thing, I, I I feel like I have always uh, I have always thought about this a lot more than other people used to in the older days of the internet, like in IRC and like AIM and all that. Uh, the the small little things that when you're typing come across in a different way than you mean them. And the big the biggest two examples I can think of the uh, of this is. Uh, when you when you put three dots after something like after a message mm-hmm. uh people my mom will do that sometimes and or you know she'll i think she does it uh maybe unintentionally but when you put three dots after something you know it kind of it sounds like you're trailing off or it sounds like you're sort of a, a little bit miffed at something the other person said <laughs> yes um and then the other one is uh is the infamous uh k Right, just the letter K when you're oh, when you're right. accepting acknowledging something, but you put K. Now, that is just the you know a one one character response is the easiest way to send back to you acknowledge something, but that can be misinterpreted as you having a negative reaction to it. So, what can never be misinterpreted ever the thumbs up emoji. That's true. It is the most, well, it's like the know, most neutral you know, way to accept you know, that like I have seen your, I have seen what you've said and I acknowledge it and we're all good. See, I think it's pretty interesting that the, the single K is seen that way, but I do the, the double. I hit him with a double K. Yeah, so double K is fine. The only problem is if you accidentally hit it one extra time, the triple K, not okay. Oof. Yeah. The triple K, line. not K. It's just, uh, it's very complicated being on the internet. So I think you know what? Actually, I'm I'm pretty glad that uh, that your your grandmother has discovered emoji because that means that she will send she will send those along instead of perhaps adopting some odd typing vernacular, you know. And like you don't want you don't want her sending you K or sending you three dots after a message because then it's hard to interpret. For sure. Now we really one one place that really 
that's it is Facebook Messenger emojis. Those are world class emojis. The combination, the go to I always go to. Uh, first, I put in you know the classic frog emoji, and uh, the angle of its face combined with the following emoji of the, uh, it's like the okay hand signal where like your index finger and thumb are connecting, making yeah, the okay. okay hand. They're just both angled so well. Yeah, the okay <laughs> hand. Just the frog with that okay hand, it looks gorgeous. Like that works in every scenario because like it's not only agreement, but it's also like, oh, that's trendy. That's cool. He put thought into this. It's like personal. But I also got a agreement. small chuckle out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, so, you are you know, the youngest one out of us here, so I feel like you would be on the cutting edge of uh, of emoji trends. Absolutely. Yeah. It's basically all I do all day is just scour through the. Was it hundreds of emojis Facebook has and the thing is too they're they're adding more over time. I've see. noticed that with the latest iOS update, they added some new some new ones that weren't there before. So well, so, so what I'm options. personally waiting for as an Android user is the Twitch chat uh, emoji keyboard. Yes, that has been that has been pretty great. Uh, except the, what I've discovered is that I don't have very many people I text with who I can actually utilize the Twitch keyboard with appropriately because most of the people that I interact with online, I, I'm not usually texting them that frequently. And, uh, and so like, you know, I'll send, I'll send Hillary some Twitch emoji, uh, you know, some Twitch emoticons, uh, in a text and, and it just makes her upset cause she doesn't get the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't use it very often. Um, yes. Yeah, the only have you guys ever had really... a problem where? Go ahead. I was just gonna say, I for, for if you guys look at my my texts, I just really text Brandon just memes, and that's about it. So <laughs> that's, that's true. I can confirm that. <laughs> I'm always scared too. Like I feel like there'll be repercussions if I ever just send him memes because I kind of view Brandon as my boss in a way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, so it's a dangerous game. Have any of you like have a problem where you be texting somebody, or and you want to use like you know you want to say Kappa or PogChamp? Oh, yeah, all the time. All, yeah, all the or, time. Like, or Dan's game. Yeah, it's it sucks because like you <laughs> wish more people would get it. It really works for a lot of situations, but like you can't say, oh, uh, it, it's not yeah. a break that point to where it's mainstream until you know Facebook buys Twitch. I don't know, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> Well, uh, well you, that's, may be, you may be waiting a while for that one. Yeah. Well, that yeah, was a, maybe. that's a funny thing because I because I talk to you guys so much online and and like people in our social group so much online that I don't realize that like maybe not all gamers don't watch Twitch or YouTube or something because like I was on uh sorry uh <laughs> um, I was playing a game of Rust the other day. And I was asking them, hey, who else is watching Games Done Quick? And I, it was like a group of like 15 people or something. Every single one of them was like, what the hell is that? Like, what is that? And it, it's just a, it's kind of weird, Aww. these little, little social circles that we have. But I at least got to tell them about it and what they did. But um, That's good. See, you, it's yeah. on you to spread the word. Hello? Hello? Oh, did our call drop? <laughs> Do we black out? No, I think we just had some a long period of silence there. Weird. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was the pregnant pause of a lifetime, right there. I don't. That. I, I mean. Okay. I think. I think something must have cut out because I don't. I didn't hear you guys for like a full five seconds. Anyway. Oh, weird. Um. <laughs> no one had a witty remark, so we all just kind of waited. Well. In that case, uh, what have we been doing, KD? <laughs> have you been uh, Have you been on any any dates recently? Uh, uh, no, 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 no good news to report. Unfortunately, it was another bad week. Okay. So, okay. what about you, Hutch? Uh, I've been snowed in, so yeah, I, I oh, dumped right. snow up here, um, and I just I just decided to stay home and work from home, and then. Um, yeah, played played a lot of video games. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah, well, good to cool. hear. Uh, I have also I haven't really done a whole lot this week. Uh, it's like the first 
I guess the first full week back at work. Uh, so it was a lot of work stuff. Um, but then we have a three-day weekend this week, so that's kind of nice. But, uh, well, then let's talk about what we have been gaming. You just talked about Rust. Have you been playing much Rust, Hutch? Yeah, I got back into the grind, man. I, yeah. I, the, the addiction is back. <laughs> what what keeps pulling you back in? Like, is there new content, or is it just is it just your addiction resurfacing? I think once I saw Gary Newman's just uh, disdain toward the Reddit community, it just got me into <laughs> feeling like I need to be toxic again in the in the in in this in a server. But um, no, I don't know what it is. I think it's just a um. I think I had burned myself out of rest so much that I just was like, okay, I now 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 I'm feeling like I can get back into it. So now it is my most played game on Steam. Um, but I've also been getting into uh, King of the Kill, uh, H1Z1. I saw you playing that the other night. Tell me about that. Yeah, so it's it's a broken piece of shit. Um, <laughs> but it's 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 so hard to get a game that like gets your, you know adrenaline going like that like is it's once once you get to top 10 like you just want to get to the end and um and those those moments just get so intense and um you never know when the game might just fuck you over with a game like a game breaking bug but um it's just it's just so intense it, i just the adrenaline is worth it if, if you spend 90 percent of your time just losing but you win maybe 10 percent, you get top five 10 percent of the time it is so worth it but um i would like to see a lot of the mechanics fixed it seems like the developers are just adding skins at this point rather than actually like fixing the game at least to me but i'm no developer so i don't know what they're doing but i just gotta just gotta tweet at jimmy wasn't hunt we'll take care of it that's right <laughs> that's right yeah wow. it's yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a lot of people are playing H1Z1. Uh, I actually thought... I've kind of wanted to get into it recently. Um, I was actually watching Gold Glove last night uh, at like 5 in the morning or something. And uh, and he was he he was playing King of the Kill. And he got, into, he got into top 10. And I was doing something else. I think I was grinding WoW dailies or something. And, uh, and he was in top 10. And all of a sudden, I just realized like I was just sitting there... Uh, in the middle, you know, in the middle of my game, not really watching it at all, uh-huh. and uh, and and it was like you said, it was really really intense because the uh, the toxic gas kept moving in and in and in, and he ended up right. winning that game, uh, and it was really really entertaining to watch. So it makes me want to, it makes me want to get good at it. Like I understand the game; it seems pretty basic, um, but yeah, I right. I I also worry that it's still got a lot of glitches that would make me get mad at it. Oh, no doubt. Like, there have been bugs that have just made me completely, like, quit the game for, like, two days or something. Because, like, yeah. um, like I've been recording all my footage just, just to see if I can get a good moment or something. Mm. But really, what I'm getting out of it is just, like, game-breaking bugs that I've been recording. <laughs> and uh, and so, like, one time, I was I have footage of me just sit standing there shooting a guy, and I'm looking at him. I put like a full clip into him and none of the hit, the hits are registering, but you can see in the video, my crosshair is right on him. And like, that was frustration. Uh, there's another bug where I was in a truck and I was just healing myself and out of nowhere, my character just like levitates out of the roof. And then <laughs> I am out of the vehicle on my screen, but the server still thinks I'm in the truck. So I could walk around the server and shoot, but my character, according to the server, is still sitting in the truck. So I'm just spinning in a truck, looking really stupid, <laughs> and shooting my shooting my gun. So, uh, and the other thing was too. So like my my partner at the time, he he was like, "Yeah, dude, you're in the truck," and he could shoot me in the truck, and I'd be somewhere else, and it'd hurt me. So it's like, <laughs> and we were we. Were, we were doing pretty good too. It was like a good run. And of course that run was ruined because I was stuck in a fucking truck. So, um, yeah, it was, it was brutal, but it seems like some, some of those bugs can be a little bit endearing, but a bug like that, that potentially ruins a run. Like let's say you were in top 10 or something and that happened that mm-hmm. those can be really frustrating. Yeah. But 
Yeah, it it's worth. I think it's, I think it's only twenty bucks, and I think it's worth that. Yeah, I've, I've I've owned it forever, um, and I don't I haven't played it actually since the split, uh, since they split out King of the Kill uh, into its own game. Oh, oh, right. I, I mean, I well, I've opened it. I just haven't really, I haven't really played it. I opened it. I'll tell you what I did. I opened it and I redeemed my Twitch Prime skins. That's all I've done. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, you know what's funny is that that got me to play. Like honestly, yeah. it's yeah. like okay, I own this. That's game, what made so. me want to play too. Is I was like, well, cool. I've already got a full set of my, you know, my purple Twitch gear. So it made me want to play too, but I haven't yet. So can you? You can do. Uh, you can do like duos, right? Yeah, and then you can also do parties of up to five. So okay, we should do that then. Like, I think that would be that would be fun because I'm gonna yeah, be probably I'm pretty down. awful, but I would definitely like I'm to s- give it a try. Yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. So yeah, okay. let's let's do it sometime. All right. Have you played anything else recently? Um, I've been playing the indie game uh, Astroneer. It's in pre-alpha. Oh yeah. But, uh, oh. It's it's this low poly like space exploration game. Yeah, um, we were talking about. Uh, last week i think yeah it's just it's pre-alpha it doesn't have a lot to it but it it's so it's so good for what it is is it is the most polished not even beta game that i've ever played it's like i said it's pre-alpha and it's like almost no bugs um people people i've i've seen a few handfuls of comparisons to uh no man's sky is it remotely like no man's sky here and there I think the premise is like no Man, no man's sky where you can go to planets, explore, gather resources and stuff. There's no monsters, but there's base building and and uh you know, there is multiplayer unlike um what was promised for no man's sky. Uh I don't know. Yeah. I I would say it's the the me- core mechanics, you know, the, the the premise of it is similar, but everything else is completely different. So Okay. Are there no loading screens? They're just just getting into your world. That's it, I think. But what an impressive technical feat! <laughs> I'll be incredibly excited for this and spend sixty dollars. Well, what have you uh, what have you spent sixty dollars on recently, KD? What are you playing? Well, I have been staying pretty true to my pact of not buying anything until I finish uh, what I've already bought. Okay. So I haven't spent Ooh. a lot of money. You augmenting but, uh, I have... your spreadsheet? Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm striking through some things, switching some text colors from black to green. Okay. Uh, thus indicating I finished the game, you know. But uh, yeah, I finished uh, Crossman off last week. I finished uh, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, the the remaster on the PS3. And uh, yeah, that that game was a bitch to get the secret final ending on that because they have like the game starts out and you have three different stories of three different characters you have to finish. And then after you finish all of those, but only if you have separate save files for those characters with all of these like hidden items to get, you just a general file for you to play of the last episode. And so after you finish that, you then have to go back and collect all of these pointless stickers. Well, they're not entirely pointless, but you have to go back and find these stickers throughout the entire game. And then it unlocks the secret episode that you finish. I mean, it was just a bit like it was a bit to go through to see every little bit of content. But uh, yeah, that game really has a, a, a tough end game because by the time you finish the game, you're level 25 to 30. That's when you finish a game for one character. So like the whole point of like the evolution of your character and stuff like that is uh, buying abilities, leveling them up and melding them. But by the time you, and so like, you know, different abilities can combine different things so you can make some pretty crazy stuff. But uh, by the time you finally get to the end of that and you get really going, unless you really start dedicating and grinding early game, the game's already done by the time you really start, it starts really fleshing out. I guess mm. so like but that kind of comes with you know the, the length of each character this is like an rpg and uh each character's story takes like seven to eight hours depending on you know how much side content you want to do and then when it comes to end game stuff like there are end game bosses designed for you to be level 99 so if you finish the game at 30 it's just straight grinding until you're able to fight those bosses so really? that didn't really is there, mu- is there much in between much. there, though? Like, are there bosses that you can 
you know, that you can fight at uh, level 50 or something? Or is it just like crazy in-game stuff? Well, basically all there really is as far as new content is uh, an arena you go to that you unlock like new levels for like as you go. And that scales with your level. But it really is just, it's exactly that. It's an arena. You're fighting the same enemies over again and the occasional new boss. But it's the new bosses that you fight are just random enemies. They're nothing, nothing really related to story until you get to you know, the level 99 stuff, then you get some honestly pretty cool stuff, you know, but uh, like characters from other games showing up. But are you going to stick it out until level 99? That seems uh, seems like a lot. Honestly, you know, side content in video games doesn't really, I mean, it depends on the game, but it doesn't really interest me that much. Like, for example, you know, Final Fantasy 15, I beat that in 25 hours, only doing the main story. And then my brother did a lot of the side content and and when he beat the game he was up to like 90 hours so but just anything that doesn't really uh connect with a story in the game or anything like that just really doesn't motivate me i know i i'm just one of you know those gamers that it doesn't interest but you know i mean you're trying to cross things off your spreadsheet i get it (laughs) yeah i've got i've got an agenda to keep up with i can't waste all my time (laughs) you know meaningless you know side quests but uh other than that, let me think. I mean, I don't know if I'd really count this. I started it today. I'm only two hours into it, which, I mean, is really not that much. I started The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword because uh, uh, I've been. there are a few Zelda games I've been meaning to finish before Breath of the Wild comes out. And uh, seeing the new trailer, which we'll talk about later, has inspired me to go back and rush through those. So, yeah, I've been playing Skyward Sword. Uh, and I've heard from basically everybody that that game has uh, pretty bothersome motion controls that make you do. Like, for example, uh, like if you pick up a pot, you can't just like, if you want to throw the pot, you have to hold the Wii remote up and shake it to throw it. If you want to <laughs> roll it on the ground, you have to literally hold your remote at like a 90 degree angle from your TV facing down and then fling up to roll the pot. Uh, every single attack with your sword is a swing of the remote. And when enemies take a lot of hits to kill, you're going to be swinging your remote a lot of the time. And the the registration, say, like, for example, the stabbing motion, if you want to do a stabbing motion, that is, for me at least, I mean, I might have to practice, I guess, you know, I just started, but it is very annoying to try and do that. So, but at the end, of, it's not like unplayable. It's just I really wish there was an option to just use, uh, you know, classic Zelda controls. Like I remember when the game came out, you heard like reviewers talking like, once you play one to one start control with the new Zelda, you're never going to want to go back. And I'm playing it like, dear God, if I have to shake this thing wildly anymore, like when you first pick up the and this isn't a spoiler, this happens like before you even leave the first town of the game, you get a uh, the certain sword. It's like important to the story. And when you pick it up, they make you do this motion control like sequence where you have to walk up to it, hold your remote at the 90 degree thing. And I'm like sitting down on my couch. Like I'm not about to stand up for this. So I'm struggling. Hold it at that 90 degree angle, (laughs) hold a, and the screen is like guiding you through this. Like, okay, now that you have a held slowly pull the remote up, then while holding a rotate it up and like link is shaking rapidly trying to do the keep up with like the motion accuracy and you have to hold it up to the sky to like enhance it with light and he's just like fidgeting trying to get it to that sweet spot and it's like oh god like can i just turn this off please you know <laughs> like and part of me thinks you know they're they did a remaster for wind waker and twilight princess so why would they not do a remaster for skyward sword i can only hope they find a way to get rid of that uh motion control for the new stuff also it's a it's a wii game and uh i'm not emulating it so doesn't look the best those textures are uh kind of rough yeah those, those, i don't think those filter. games have aged very well no not really well actually it's weird because i uh like a, i'd say a few weeks ago i played you know super mario galaxy 2 that game actually looks really good still on the wii mm. But then, I don't know, maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe it's because I, you know, just came off of the, like, I play Rocket League here and there, so going back and forth, you could kind of see a difference there, but. Yeah, I feel like so, the motion controls, some in some games, they're, they're fun, but in other games, like you're mentioning, it's just, 
it gets in the way of enjoying the actual game itself. And I feel like a game like Zelda, you're you know you're kind of playing for the story. You're not necessarily playing for the you know this motion control experience. And I worry that that's uh, like we're going to talk about the Switch, but um, sometimes you don't want this this particular motion control experience. Like I, I don't know. I, I think that's why I think so many people enjoyed like Wii Sports, for instance, because. Yeah. We like sports games in general. I think are made better by having a cool motion control scheme. Um, and like for example, the um, my my parents had a PS3. I had a PS3, and uh, mm-hmm. and they we got the uh, I forget what the actual game is called, but it's like the PlayStation Sports Wii Sports equivalent type game. And uh, I think it's like Sports Champions or something like that. Uh, I I honestly don't remember, but they had they had okay. several different games. And uh, and the motion controls were were really good. Like the the PlayStation camera actually did a pretty good job of tracking the the move controls, and uh, and I really liked that sports game. We played we played a lot of it, uh, but it on, it worked because it, those games were pretty simple in the first place. And so like in the volleyball game, all you're doing is moving the control up and then you know up and then you're hitting the ball and then you're hitting the ball again and hitting the ball again. And so there's no real advanced combat or anything. Um, but I think like they're still trying to look for a way that motion controls can be additive to a game like that's as rich as Zelda. Um, when I feel like they're still the only reason people are getting those games, or, you know, are, are are because of the like simple the simple nature of the games that it works well with. Does that make sense? Do you guys agree? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Like. Uh... Yeah, on Zelda, it's just you, you never want motion control to feel cumbersome, you know, with like something like Wii Sports. It's not something you're constantly doing, you know, because it's it's like sports, you know, playing tennis. You know exactly. It's very clear and defined what you're doing. Like you, all you're doing is hitting the ball at a certain time. You know, baseball, you're swinging right. And uh, like but for Zelda, where you have all those complex angles where they're constantly like I, I played a long time ago. I was playing like Metroid Prime uh, 3 on the Wii. And if like to open a door, I remember you had to like keep your remote held in a certain way, facing the TV, hold a thrust it forward, turn it 90 degrees, pull it back, let go of a. And it's just like, God, just let me press a to open the goddamn door. Like, you know, <laughs> when it's cumbersome like that, I just I just can't stand when it's like that. But, you know, nothing has really happened in uh, Skyward Sword yet that has really, I guess, offended me. Like, you know, I can deal with what has happened so far you know but let's let's just hope it stays like that i guess but uh yeah other than that persona 4 that game is 80 hours long and uh gotta beat it before april persona 5 it's gonna be over taking a month off of work you know just to blow through that game damn uh, yeah all right right. well you got your priorities in order absolutely yeah (laughs) but yeah that's it for me okay um, I'll go real quick then. Uh, I've been, I, I, well, for what we've been doing, I mean, I just remembered cause obviously we're, we're going to mention it here, but, uh, basically all week I was watching GDQ. Like I just, ba- I just had it mm-hmm. in my consciousness. Um, so all, all computers I were, I was using had the stream up pretty much all times. So I watched a lot of GDQ. Um, they had some really good races, uh, and just some really good runs in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I okay. think my my favorite was probably the Doom run because I've mentioned before on the cast that I, I I I think my favorite runs are the ones that aren't um, perfected so much and you know so so many of the older runs uh, with a lot of people playing them that you know they they're so good at them they have them down to a science uh, and so the new games a lot of times aren't quite as perfected yet but that Doom run just had so many glitches. And so, like, so really? many spots where they clip outside of the map, and just I didn't, I was not expecting because uh, I've watched Doom speedrunners here and there, but never like I've never watched a full Doom speedrun. I did not realize just the sheer amount of glitches they have, and like how broken that game can be when you're trying to break it. So okay. that was probably my favorite mm. run. Did you guys have a favorite run? Did you guys watch much? Uh, I did. I. I didn't really catch that much. I heard from a lot of people that the uh, 
the Dark Souls 3 run was pretty entertaining because of uh, apparently oh, yeah. it was kind of a, like there were some crashes and things. And uh, I mean, the most I got from it was uh, uh, a couple of people tweeting about it. And then uh, this, uh, I don't know if you guys know Elias, he's a Dark Souls speedrunner. He also, he tweeted, if if uh, I think his name is Bubbles, if Bubbles dies to the final boss, I will down this bottle of whiskey. <laughs> so that kind of gave me an idea like where it was going. So, but I did hear, you know, end of the day it was entertaining. So I really do need to, I'm going to go through and watch a lot of the VODs. It's pretty much like what I do mostly for GDQs. Like, I mean, watching it live, you know, that's, you know, it's magical. The chat, you know, it's just the experience of, you know, when they when cringe happens, thousands <laughs> of people to, to capitalize on it. So well, that, I was about then, to say I, a lot of my catch up is like going to Reddit and seeing what like, yeah. Uh, has popped up because I'm not gonna <laughs> lie like um like some of these guys like there's what they do is amazing but but the, some characters i would say probably don't get out as much as they probably should um and some some of the commentary we've heard over the years has been quite interesting some <laughs> some, pe some people don't return because of this commentary um Despite giving us one of the most entertaining runs of GDQ, in the case of Bone Saw, but you know, I don't yeah. know if you guys watched that, but that, that was an amazing. Uh, there's, pseudo. there's just so many, just uh, bits that come out of, <laughs> out of GDQ that, uh, that's usually how I catch up. You know, it's, it's like either amazing, uh, runs that I see highlighted, or just probably yeah. the cringiest, like biggest fails and. I love it. And the chat goes crazy, of course, too, you know. Um, <laughs> yes. But that's usually how I how I catch up is just wait for it to s spawn up naturally on the Internet because because it is a time sink. That's the thing. Like GDQ is nonstop for like, oh, yeah. How many days? Yeah, like, just the, the sheer amount of content because they're going for 24 hours a day. Uh, yeah. You're you're bound to have, you know, some some super entertaining folks, some people that are maybe a little lower energy. Like it's a lot of personalities. Uh, for a seven-day event, so it, uh, there's not really much like that because a lot of those people are not professional. You know, they're, they're not professional commentators. They're not professional personalities necessarily. Exactly. Um, but they're thrust in front of you know a hundred thousand plus people. So yeah, the, I mean, it's a unique event. Why don't we? Why don't we just? Is it okay if we go right into the news and talk about uh? Um... uh well, yeah. I'll, I'll real quick. I'll just I'll segue. Real fast, uh, I've been I've still been binging a whole bunch of Diablo, which oh, I didn't right. think I would still be playing Diablo at this point, uh, but it has pretty much gripped me the entire week, and I don't exactly know why, because you're basically just running a treadmill that never stops, but mm. uh, but there's been something about it that's been fun. So I've been I've been upping my character. Uh, my monk is. I'm I'm doing greater like level seventy greater rifts, which is pretty good, um, and I'm like level five hundred something paragon now. So uh, anyway, I think this this may be the down like the kind of the downhill part of my Diablo playing because there's not much much higher to go um, without sinking real real time into small small upgrades. Uh, but I've been I've played way too much of that this past week. Um, so that's that's about all I've played. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about GDQ a little bit more. Um, they so they they raised uh, over two million dollars, uh, which is a record for their event. They raised over a little oh, over two point yeah. two million. Um, I mean, that's not a small number for any charity. Like, no, that's, no, that's it's it's massive. Like, um, yeah. and that that was bigger than their uh, their highest event ever in the past. Was I think a little over one point five which was yes. two years ago. So this is by far their largest event uh, to date. And there, there were some times where they were raising more than $1,000 a minute, which was just ridiculous to watch in person uh, or, or watching it live. Um, yeah. I think the, uh, the, the overall, the, the event I thought was, was pretty, pretty great. Uh, they ended with an Undertale run. Uh, which was pretty cool. They had uh, they had quite a few world records actually, like more than one. Really? Uh, which you know is is pretty pretty hard to do, I think, because um, most of the time, well, especially when it's the people that are breaking the records are usually mm -hmm. coming to 
you know, <laughs> speed run the same games. Like, right. you know, they've already done their best, you know, because they like, if you watch them on Twitch, they're, they're just doing the same runs over and over again, trying to beat their own time. So right. to have so many concurrent, like brokens or brokens records broken, like that's, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Well, so. and a lot of times for a, for a run like that, uh, you would want to take the more conservative route if there are like risky things you can do to shave off a few seconds here and there. Mm -hmm. um, you would want to go for right. the more predictable time just because of the nature of the event. So I think it, it is that much more impressive that any world records happen there um, because like you're saying, you know, in practice, there's no pressure. You know, you have plenty of times to give it a, give it a try or retry. Um, but doing it in a, in one single run and getting a world record is pretty awesome. So that happened a few times. That was really cool. Um, how was, uh, undertale? I mean, like I see that come up and I think this is how can you speed run? This is not a speed game. You know, it's an RPG. Like, uh, I that, mean, uh, I, I, I will, watched, I watched a bit of that and that was, it was, it was interesting. I'll say that because, because some of the, some of the mechanics where you just have to like dodge whatever they're shooting at you or something like Oh, was okay. impressive like where you have an hp meter or something you know that was um okay okay I, mean, I think i'm maybe thinking more of like just as in terms of like just walking around in the overworld it was just like, button mashing like, you know <laughs> trying to get through dialogue knowing what to say you know that was the kind of thing so yeah okay yeah, I, I, i'm not familiar enough with undertale because i have not played it uh but the chat was just loving every minute of it so uh, and that was, I cool. think, uh, they, they ended a little bit earlier than they normally do. They normally end at like way, you know, really early hours of the morning. But this one they ended, uh, well, I guess it was still kind of late, but it was late uh, Saturday night Pacific time, um, which was which was a little bit nicer. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the next one I think is uh, in the summer. Summer game's done quick. That's going to be July 2nd through 9th. So uh, we have that to look forward to. In about six, seven months. Uh, any other highlights you want to talk about? BDQ. Uh, mm. No. Was uh? Did it? Do you guys hear about? Was there any drama this year? That's the the main thing I go to. Like last year, or maybe a couple of years ago, where the guy who, like, apparently his wife cheated on him with the guy who was running Banjo Kazooie, <laughs> and he like sent a donation, like shit shit talking him. That was a great moment. No, I don't. I don't keep up with the, the meta of awesome games. Them quick. So. <laughs> I was gonna say you're you're really uh you're really getting into the you're, you're like really deep. really in the weeds there. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not I'm afraid. I'm not familiar with all the personal situations that happen. Oh, tell GDQ. me you've at least seen uh, the one where he's like, I'd really appreciate it if you stopped off. You you yeah, have to yeah, have seen. Yeah. That. No, I mean, yeah, I've, I've yes. But that is not the, okay. those are not the kinds of things that I focus on for the event because like the the event oh, is okay. much more entertaining than than those little pieces of you know you have you have a ton of people in one place right situations like that are going to happen that's that's sort of what I was saying earlier that mm -hmm. you have all these people that are not professional broadcast personalities uh, broadcasting for literally a week straight so you're going to have some you know a little bit of awkward moments some some weird things might happen but on the whole. I think they put on a great production, uh, considering that they, they have very very little professional broadcast talent uh, involved in you know in that content. So anyway, let's uh, let's move on to uh, really like the only big news this week. I feel like was around the Nintendo Switch, and uh, so there was a Nintendo press conference that happened. I think Thursday night. Uh, and then Friday morning, there was some more. And we are a primarily PC gaming podcast, but you know th this is, I think, big enough news. Obviously, we talk about gaming news, and uh, this week, a lot of people were talking about the Nintendo Switch. Um, so let's let's get into a little bit. The uh, you know the the basic info is that uh, the Nintendo Switch is going to launch on March third, so in less than two months. It's going to be two hundred and ninety nine dollars in the u s so you know I think uh uh that was a little higher than we had uh than that rumor had reported. I think the rumor uh was two fifty 
a little bit higher than that, but not altogether unsurprising. I think that's a mm-hmm. kind of a reasonable pri- a reasonable price for a console. Uh, you know, the, I think everyone's obviously been talking about the Joy Cons and the technology behind those. Uh, we were talking a little bit before the cast. I've seen multiple videos of people playing this uh, this cow milking simulator game or something. Yes, and yeah, I don't that is, uh... I, like I I have no idea how. Nintendo is able to get away with the things they are because I feel like like <laughs> Xbox and Sony they would not be able to demo a cow milking game and have anyone take it remotely seriously. But somehow I mean Nintendo one thing did. I can uh, one thing they talked about was something for the Joy-Con controllers where they had this HD rumble where he was showing how like uh, like because of, like some advanced uh, like rumble like vibration technology he could tell whether example there was one ice cube or two ice cubes like rattling around in there so i can only imagine like that had to do with some of those games because they were talking about like you know the cow milking thing and where like the joy cons are basically guns and you both have to draw at the same time and uh they were saying that you don't even have to look at the tv to play these games like you can get it all from just vibrations from the controller which i mean yeah that seemed kind of odd to me like I, i'm yeah. curious how you how you build a game where the intent is not to look at the screen yeah exactly it, i mean uh, maybe it's, it might be one of those things where you have to play it like they did say you know like it's one two switch that has all these like mini games so I mean, they were saying that's like a, the big icebreaker for parties, is what the translator said. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it it's seems something. it seems like it could be interesting. Um, I guess if if there are games that you can play, like basically without a television, um, kind of the, the icebreaker idea seems uh, seems neat. I'm just not sure that. I, I guess I would be surprised if people actually end up using it that way. You know, like if when I think icebreaker, mm-hmm. I think of uh, like. You know, a corporate retreat where you don't know a whole lot of people that you work with, and so you do an icebreaker. It's like, are people gonna bring a Nintendo Switch along with them to do an icebreaker, uh, like I'll where it's only game. where it's only two people at a time? And you know, I just like that. I don't know how real a situation like that is, but uh, I guess it, it's. I don't want to. I don't want to talk negatively about it because I. I don't really know what all types of things you'll be able to do with it. Um, uh huh. But yeah, the you know the at first glance I do feel like the the controllers maybe are they, some of the things they were describing with the controllers to me feel a little bit gimmicky. It feels a little bit like the Wii, yeah. where you know like there's this gimmick, you know, and and I I think maybe people will buy that. Uh, you know, people definitely bought the Wii. I'm just not sure how much staying power they will actually have with that. So I think. I think the biggest thing with this is um, Nintendo has to think of a way to differentiate themselves. Like they, the thing is they're always, they're trying to differentiate themselves with the controller. That's apparent. Cause like in their, their keynote press conference, whatever that you want to call it, they even were saying that like every single generation of Nintendo products, you know, we've renovated the, you know the controller in a different way. The Nintendo 64 had the the joystick, the first joystick, and then the um, GameCube had a handle on the system. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, so, so, so they they were saying the selling point was for them. It's not about the actual system itself, you know, like um, with the graphics or anything like that. It was it was how you interact with your games, but. Um, and that was with the controller, which I think all it is, is, is a controller with like three different vibration motors in it. I think that's all it is because, <laughs> cause like, um, saying that you can feel ice cubes going down a cup and you're holding the cup via your controller is mm-hmm. all, all that really spoke to me. It was like, okay, it's got three different motors. So you can just feel when like, uh, the second one goes off and the first one goes off, but yeah, I, when I was that, watching yeah, that part of the press the conference, most... I, I was having trouble understanding why that mattered. Like <laughs> I, I was like, okay, so you can feel one ice cube or two ice cubes or three ice cubes, but like, what is the real, what what is the real impact of that? Like, why does it matter whether I know whether there's one or two ice cubes? Am I yeah, playing a exactly. game about ice cubes? Like, what is? How does that and make then... the experience better? 
Another Maybe example it's... they did was like they have a camera on the front of the Joy-Con that can detect whether or not you're doing like, for example, rock, paper, scissors to the thing. And at that juncture, why don't you just play rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> yeah. Person. Well, so the way I was thinking of it is like Nintendo at this point has clearly made an effort to not focus on graphics because when you get into the graphics dick measuring contest, then it's maybe less about the games, more about just the console and what's on paper. So mm-hmm. they also have to think about their price range. When you do these new graphics chips, chipsets and everything, that's obviously going to raise the price. So they have to do something that's affordable because they are they have the advantage of, okay, this is a new console. It's going to be, be able to play these games at a higher resolution slash frame rate, but we still want to be cheaper than our other competitors out there. So I think the only thing they could really go with was like, okay, we have to do something gimmicky. And the Wii U was obviously too much for people, but, but we had massive success with the Wii, for instance. So it's like, maybe we can go focus on the controller again, keep the price low for the console. Cause I think doing something new with the controllers is much cheaper than uh, doing a really advanced high end GPU in, in their console like by far, right. you know? So um, I think that's, that's reasoning the logic behind that. But would, as a fan, would I have, would have liked them to do that? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I personally, all I wanted from the new system was just a game player. I just want a simple, no gimmicks thing. I mean, yes. the switch themes like a, a pretty close compromise because the way they're selling it is like, you know, you can buy the pro controller and that'll be a happy medium for like basically anything that's not specially for that gimmick. Like say, for example, the Wii U, that pro controller that still only worked with some games. And it looks like for the Switch, it's going to be a game player. But then you have games like One Two Switch where the mechanics aren't really being forced down your throat. And like even in the new Zelda that's or the Mario Odyssey, those are first party titles that are void of gimmicks right so i'm hoping it keeps going down that direction yeah because what when i think of nintendo all my experiences my good experiences are not about the gimmicks and it's about the rich storytelling that all their ips have so i think yeah. of metroid i think of animal crossing i think of um mario or whatever else it might be or just the party games in general all my negative experiences have came from, oh yeah, I almost threw my fucking controller out a window <laughs> or, uh, you know, I, it's a good size to throw out a window. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, um, I don't know. I feel size to oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I just feel like Nintendo has been so out of touch with their, at least their American. I don't know what it's like overseas, but, their their us like audience like i feel like so many of us are saying you know we want these titles we want less gimmicky stuff but like i feel like we're always ignored but i feel like the nintendo kind of puts it on themselves with the way they like interact with press and their community management and stuff like the smash community for instance is like barely well until recently it you know it it hasn't really been supported until the new new smash came out like i just feel like but the community grew on its own and it's got huge and and the community had so many things to say but like nintendo just straight up wasn't listening to changes and things that could could have been done with the new game uh yeah. and and i just don't understand why it's like we want to give you guys money why aren't you guys just listening to us but then they just kind of do this like blind like no they interaction with thing. yeah they just yeah. kind of do their own thing so it's like i just don't know why like i'm i almost bought the domain uh nintendo please fucking listen to us.com and like <laughs> and like um on the website my idea was to just have like a million different ideas and like people could just basically upvote them on like what they liked and it's like so if nintendo chose to ever listen they would see what ideas stood out to the rest of them. Like, that sounds like them. a great subreddit ready to happen. <laughs> I think yeah. it, it does seem like they, I, I think they seem to be a, a company that is sort of struggling to 
create something that they they think the, like the the Japanese audience, you know, the audience they they clearly know very well will like mm -hmm. versus what the rest of the world will like. And I mean, I think not it's not like they've created something bad here, but they they definitely I don't think have they they have not gone to in a direction that lets them compete on the same playing field as Xbox and PS4 which maybe is what they're like maybe that's intentional um but I think they're still probably going to struggle with the same problems that they've had before which is that there are you know there are things about this system that seem gimmicky and it seems like you know it's it's so radically different than what else is out there that I think they're going to have a hard time you know getting third party developers to care uh, well, I guess we can talk about like the fact that they brought Todd Howard on their press conference to talk oh about how God. there's going to be a version of Skyrim for the for the Switch, and it's like, who? I mean, who cares about Skyrim on a console at the in 2017? 2017, like Skyrim is Skyrim's a great <laughs> game, but Skyrim is on. I feel like it's on every platform. It's been remastered. Like, how is that the thing that you bring Todd Howard to your press conference to talk about? Like, how is that something you expect to get your your audience excited about is Skyrim coming to your console? That just seems like yeah. such a miss to me. That, and then they're also pushing, like, Minecraft being on the Switch, which is the exact same deal. Like, we've seen that countless times. Well, let's let's be real, though. Minecraft is still somehow, like, not in our demographic, but the younger demographic is still wildly successful. Like, like Minecraft oh, so. is still selling like thousands, and thousands of copies like all the time. So to like the younger generation, I mean, they still have the Minecon going on or whatever it is. Like, I didn't even know yeah. it still existed, but, but they like so many of these younger kids. But they didn't bring. They didn't bring anyone to talk about Minecraft on stage, did they? No, so that's the other thing. That's that's what up. I mean. Is like they brought Todd yeah. Howard on stage to talk about Skyrim. Like that's what seems crazy to me. But but the crazy thing is though, I think so. Just so you guys know, I I pre-ordered. I'm putting my faith in Nintendo because I I pre-ordered a console. Now it's really? yeah. So but but I feel like maybe they are starting to listen to us, or they're recognizing who's really buying into nintendo with with all their marketing and even just the press conference to begin with like the dj before like like things started like i was impressed i was like wow this is not the nintendo i'm used to like the and just the people that they had in their ads the the you know with the wii u and the wii we saw a much younger generation uh that they were focusing on and i and i think those people grew into like basically where I'm at right now in their mid twenties, you know, um, and they're recognizing, okay, maybe our audience isn't as young or maybe this isn't where, you know, the people supporting us are. And like, I, we see that in like the way they're approaching stuff, the games they are coming out with, with the, like the, the campaigns they're doing, like we didn't see any kids in the conference. Like I, and we didn't see Minecraft for instance. Like, I feel like that's a, the, the, their focus is changing um and i kind of like that and that's why i i, I felt like comfortable pre-ordering the switch personally but. okay okay well for and for 2.99 i think there will be people that buy it just because it's not you know it's not four or five six hundred dollars it's it is yeah. it is in the realm of affordability for people that are into games so, I mean, that, I think the price plays a big part in that. Uh, it's not like it's a massive gamble. Um, and they have, uh, so their, I guess we can talk about like their launch lineup. Uh, the, we, were talk, we talked about one, two switch, the kind of casual mini game stuff. They also showed off a, a game that's literally just called Arms. Uh, that, is, yeah. <laughs> that is like a fighting game. Uh, which actually looked kind of neat, but when I saw the the title is literally Arms, like this is the least inspired title I've ever seen. <laughs> the game is literally yeah. just called Arms. Yeah. So uh, aside from some decent memes that can come from that title, uh, my favorite being the sequel will be Arms Two: Colon Legs. That's a that's a good one. Um, 
that that <laughs> seems a little uninspired to me but uh we'll see where they go with that stuff i guess in the realm of more traditional games um let's see what you you actually we had we actually had a viewer question that i'll toss in here since we're talking about the switch uh from tally d in the hall asked how pathetic is the lineup of switch launch titles uh kd you had posted some here we've got a legend mm-hmm. of zelda coming yeah. uh i think on launch there's a mario title yeah, the, that will be here. sorry go ahead the, the note I made: These are the launch games. These are get. There are only five games that launch with the system. <laughs> yeah, the, the new Mario that doesn't come out until holiday 2017. Yeah, the new. You're gonna have to wait uh, nine months, roughly nine months, for a new Mario game. Yes. So five but, uh, five titles on launch day. We've got one, two, Switch, which are the mini games we talked about. We have Just Dance 2017, non-exclusive. We have Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, also non-exclusive. We've got Skylanders Imaginators, non-exclusive. And we have uh, Super Bomberman R. Uh, haven't se- didn't see, I think, a, a video or like a screenshot of even of that game at the conference. So, well, not really. Uh, so there's ahead. a lot of criticism for that, but I think um, we're going to talk about this too. Uh, Reggie explained why Nintendo only had five games at launch. And he said that a uh, launch day is not the be all and the end all. It is really the steady pacing of content that continually reinforces for the people who bought into the platform why they made a smart choice, as well as what compels people who might be sitting on the sideline to jump in. We feel we have this great ongoing march of content to motivate you to jump into the platform, which he's he's probably referring to that, like, people are w- wondering why are we having to wait till April for the remake remaster of Mario Kart Eight or whatever, like, um, which to me doesn't make much sense. But like, I don't know. I I do see where he's coming from because it's like with the Wii U, I feel like we got a few tile titles and then just kind of died out and so if if they do a steady pace of content like that might be good but i think that that to me it i mean you can be generous there if you like but i think that also behind the scenes could mean that you know yeah like people aren't done with their games and that i don't know i don't know how to read that but a a bad i mean a small launch lineup like literally only five games that means that there's only five potential games you might like. I think tell, saying that yep. that there's going to be a pace of content and that's good for people. That is only good if you enjoy the con. Like if if those content, uh, if that content appeals to you. And out of five games, is is just Dance 2017 going to appeal to everyone? No. Like that's a it's a dance game. You you know if if you're looking for story, if you're looking for an adventure type game, Just Dance doesn't appeal to you. Uh, Zelda is obviously like the bread and butter of that lineup. That's what they're banking on. Um, Skylanders, again, pretty niche. Like you're, you know, you're you're probably gonna know at this point if you're into Skylanders or not. One two Switch is casual games. Super Bomberman R. We don't even really know much about that. Like, there's only five games you even have to pick from. I think that there's no way around it. That's a pretty weak launch lineup. Like, are you just yeah. hoping that everyone that everyone is satisfied with Zelda? And then you're able to get games out quickly enough that they forget yeah. that you only had five games available. If you're talking about like a steady flow of games, I mean, you can say that, but in all reality, you buy the system day one, you've got one solid game. You've got Breath of the Wild. You have one, two, Switch, which really you can only play with other people. And uh, yeah, that's about all you can do with your system uh, until new games get made for it. So that's not really... Uh, I mean, you you get what I'm saying? Like that's not really a steady. Yeah, stream well, and, of and some of the and some of the know. the content too, uh, for example, is like it's going to be stuff that you probably have played before, like Skyrim or like yeah, I think Binding Mario of Kart. Isaac or Stardew Valley. Uh, I'm looking at this list of games. Um, you know, there's like there are very few. There's not that many games on here that that like you're going to be clamoring to play on the Switch. And so I think it's a little disingenuous to say that the pace of content is going to like people are going to be happy with because if there's a couple games coming out a week uh but one of those ga- like one week that uh, those games are Minecraft story mode and Skyrim it's like 
well, that's not a that's not a week that any content is added that anyone really cares about. I don't know. Maybe people care about Minecraft Story Mode, but uh, oh god, but th it feels a little it feels a little switch? thin. I don't know. I was reading this infographic that uh, that has a bunch of titles on it. So, oh god, that's um, a system seller right there. I guess we can also talk about uh, so they they're going to have an online service. Uh, but supposedly there's going to they kind of quietly slipped in that there's going to be a paid subscription required for online play. Yes. Uh, yeah, it'll which... start out. It'll be free, I think, until uh, I'm not sure what the date is, but it's sometime uh, in about. I think mid until the fall or something, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think it's gonna, there, it's going to be like a free trial until the fall, and then you'll I guess then you'll have to pay for it. But they haven't talked about price or anything yet. So I'm yeah. wondering. I'm wondering if they are just setting people's expectations that they'll have to pay for it, and they'll see how people respond. Uh, because I feel like the so do you have to? You don't have to pay for Xbox anymore. No, you do. You do but for online still. I'm I'm trying to yeah. remember. Yeah, Xbox and PlayStation. PlayStation was the one that was those. was was free. But that's then right. The, that's right. Before before they went to a payment model. Yeah, that sh shows how often I play uh, console games online. Um, <laughs> so this is juicy. But let's let's get into some of the benefits you get with this subscription service. You know, Xbox Live, PlayStation Plus. Not only do you get you know. Uh, the online multiplayer gaming with other people, but you get uh, some free games every month. Like I can say as a PlayStation Plus subscriber, I'm getting anywhere from two to six games because uh, there are some uh, cross-platform games they include on there. Every month I get those free games. So what do you get with the... Uh, and they... Um, I've heard the rumor it's going to be, you know, I think $5 a month is the price for this uh, annual service, so 60 a year. What do we? What benefits do we get with this service? Well, alongside online play, uh, some benefits include an integrated uh, system, uh, including online lobbies and voice chat through a smart device app. Now that's worth the money right there. But uh, as far as free games go, uh, subscribers to the online service will get one monthly game rental, not ownership, a rental of a virtual console Nintendo or Super Nintendo title. So well, that's that's basically that's basically PlayStation Plus, right? Where you you got a, a quote unquote well, free no. game every month, and you only got well, to play it for that month, right? No, I you can play PlayStation Plus games after that month as long as you have a subscription. Yeah, you have to like claim them, right? Play... What? Well, yeah, no, you have to claim them, a, but you, that was the thing yeah, about you the game as long as you have a subscription. Like, you, it's not for that month only. Really. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm playing a game right now. But uh, I was playing Transformers Devastation. That was like last month. And uh, But anyways, yeah, these you get a Nintendo or Super Nintendo game for that one month only. These are games you can emulate effortlessly on 90% of phones and computers. So essentially worthless games. I don't know who they think they're fooling with this. Like, who's getting excited over a free Nintendo or Super Nintendo game? Like... It's there's no value. The value proposition compared to Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus, where you get not only an objectively more competent online service because everybody knows Nintendo sucks at online, uh, you know, content offerings, and so you're paying the same price and getting essentially almost worthless games with a, a, a big feature being voice chat through your smartphone, like. It just boggles my mind how they like, th like the whole value proposition here is just really not great. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, I don't know. Has it been confirmed that it's only for that given month? It's. I yes. guess it sounds like okay. That I think that's for a free for a month. Yeah, is what the articles. That's. I think that's a pretty. That to me feels like a pretty big miss. I wouldn't be surprised if they change that policy because, again, I you know they want to. I think they want to be unique compared to Xbox and PlayStation, but when it comes to things like this, I think you know people are going to be looking at charts of features and you know uh, comparing them across the three consoles, and uh, like forcing people to buy something at the end of the the month if they want to keep playing it instead of like you mentioned the, the Xbox and Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus. I believe they both let you if you claim the download. Uh, you can keep playing it for as long as you want, as long as you keep your subscription active to their service. Yes. Uh, so I think it it does feel a little 
a little greedy if that's the way that Nintendo's going, which is like you're offering uh, le like lesser quality games um, and then only letting them play for a month. I wouldn't be honestly though. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe that wording was just careless, and they, you know, they they update it and say actually we're you know we meant this is what we meant all along. We're gonna let you play for as long as you keep your God, subscription active. So. Like I wouldn't be surprised if they do an about face like that and say either they meant to say that in the first place or they change their policy due to feedback, because um, it seems like such a small thing. Like why risk why risk the negative PR? But then again, I guess they. Nintendo doesn't seem super receptive to the having to care about negative PR in the first place. But uh, yeah, I guess, um, I mean, I, I suppose it's par for the course for consoles uh, to have to pay for this kind of service. But it does remain to be seen, like you mentioned, uh, Nintendo's online offerings mm. have traditionally been, uh, been inferior. Uh, and I would say, I guess still are inferior uh, to Xbox and PlayStation. Yes. So... Yeah. Uh. I do want to transition into like the technical side of things because they're like a kind of like they did talk about th some things for the console. Like as far as like just like hardware accessories go, they showed off this uh, piece you can get for one of the Joy-Con things, which is like a it slides onto the end of it and has a wrist strap. And it also uh, like the end, I mean, the part that will slide into the, the Joy-Con grip that holds the two controllers. And uh, it kind of gives you like because one of the bigger complaints were like I would never I would feel like I'd be insulting my friend if I handed him this little three inch thing for a controller, but anything that will make that bigger and make it feel like more like an actual controller is cool. So I thought that was cool. But uh, uh, the one thing I found just mind boggling is that this is the next generation of consoles and for internal storage of the Nintendo switch, you've got 32 gigabytes again. <laughs> That is the same. That is as that the is Wii U. absurd. Yes, and uh, a digital download for let's say the new Zelda is fourteen gigabytes. So, not even counting uh, storage taken up by say the operating system, things like that. You're looking at forty percent of your storage already taken up by one game. Which, I mean, I don't know why. It's it's the next generation. Why not just make them, you know, 32 gig? And one thing they did say when brought up with that argument was that uh, underneath the part of the switch that opens up is like the stand for it. There is a SD card slot with up to, uh, you know, current technology of uh, SD cards. I think it's like 120 gigabytes you can add on. But the that's problem still, with that's that, still not even that much. I feel like for a console. No. And on top of that, SD cards are slow as fuck. Yeah. Like I mean if you That's were looking not a good at like solution a premium, for a console. Yeah, absolutely not. And then uh, another thing I wanted to touch on also was like the they showed off like the prices of the different controllers you get which uh uh so if you want to buy a pack of uh as far as I know you can only buy the Joy-Con controllers in a pack of two because you know they, I mean they pretty you're not much gonna, are you're not going to milk that cow alone. No, yeah, exactly. You need a friend. Uh, so if you want a pack of those two, uh, I'll use the word measly controllers. Uh, that's going for 80 bucks right now. And uh, if you wanted to pick up one of those uh, pro controllers, you know, to sit alongside your Xbox One controller or your PS4 pad, uh, those are going for $70. That is... I uh, more than or like you know prices have gone down say you can go on Amazon get them for five dollars cheaper but that's ten dollars more than the Xbox one and PS4 controllers which are just uh, you just take one glimpse and they are much better controllers like just you know I mean objectively better controllers than this pro controller it makes no sense why it's seventy dollars there's no key feature that this controller has that the other two don't I mean yeah, I was going to ask what the what the difference is there. It's it's just I didn't control. really pay that much attention. I mean, it's just uh, I mean, it's a basic controller. There's no touchpad. I'm not sure about a headphone jack or anything. I mean, if you it's the pro controller is just uh, if you wanted to get a controller that is more ergonomic and it doesn't split into the two Joy-Con things, you just want like a let's say example like a something feeling like an Xbox 360 pad. 
you buy the pro controller just something you know you don't have to worry about the gimmick for the two pieces coming off for example mm-hmm. like you know the wii u they had that pro controller where if you wanted extra controllers to play on that weren't the giant tablet but 70 dollars for one of those that's just why <laughs> I, I don't see it yeah it's and, it's a it's a little steep i think um but it's not like we haven't seen do you think that that's like the to to circle back to the internal storage i mean do you think that they had to do that to fit under that 300 hundred dollar price point i feel like that's why Uh, they would that's the only reason you'd skimp on that right well the the games are the games are cartridge loaded they're going back to cartridges for for the switch so i'm thinking that a lot of the a lot of the storage is going to be honestly like i don't think you're going to have to install anything i think you're going to be able to just play off your your cartridge um and who knows that might actually be fast compared um compared to like sd card you know mm-hmm. um i don't know yeah i think it was probably a move just to save money to be honest um cuz cuz like the consoles right now you know, if if you had a PlayStation that was portable, you couldn't have a fucking, uh, you know, 500 gig or one terabyte disk drive to like carry around on the train or something like that wouldn't that's, work. That's true. That's true. You know, so what's Nintendo looking at then? Well, we could do flash storage, but that's very expensive or uh, or SD cards. So, I mean, uh, I think I think they're they knew their options here and and to keep it under the price tag i think they're like yep either people download onto an sd card or um or we make it so people don't have to download anything and just play off of cartridges so yeah, that's true i guess the portability piece kind of throws a wrench in being able mm-hmm. to toss a big hard drive in it and not worry about space um but man it's just it does feel it does feel like we're <laughs> in 2010 you know where 32 gigs is uh, is an acceptable storage size. I think the yeah. fact that the fact that that could basically be two games or less, you know, when you take into account the operating system size and all that, um, right. that just seems that seems kind of inexcusable to me. Um, but uh, who knows? I mean, I guess I guess people are kind of used to used to that with uh, with portable devices. So yeah, I think that's that's the thing I wonder is like, will will people use this in Will people use this, like, will the predominant way to use it be as kind of a portable device, or are people going to use it at home? Um, And I think they've, you know, maybe they use it for both, and they hit both of those markets, you know, and people are happy, and they sell more, because some people want to use it portable, some people want to use it at home. But I think if they end up with one overwhelming use case where people just use it for one or the other, they will have made trade-offs that that put it at a disadvantage to you know the the things that are dedicated to one of those spaces right is it going to be better than just like playing games on my phone or tablet you know for for being on the train or a plane or car or whatever and is it going to be better That's, than the uh, other consoles for playing at home like i think they're they're going up against things that are probably better in each of those respective environments but the switch might be better if you you know because you can do both I just don't know if people care about doing both with the same device. Yeah. Yeah. A couple, you know, speaking of being portable like that, a couple more things to add on. Like, you know, if you're buying it to, you know, for that purpose you talked about, you you still have a 720p display with uh, a battery life of 2.5 to 6 hours. Every time I, I hear the is... short end of that, it keeps going down. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know who, who keeps spinning that down, but. I think the original was four to six, but then I heard three point five and three. Then now two point five from you, so it's like I I have no idea. But I did hear the the long end was six. So that that battery life seems okay. pretty rough to me. I think it's uh, rough. Yeah. I mean, like I but at the I same have time a. That is... Go ahead. No, I was just saying uh, one thing to note. It's actually larger than the three DS battery life was when it charged or when it launched. I mean, which is interesting. Yeah, I just I like. I don't, I guess I'm looking at this in a different way. I'm not looking at the, the Switch competing with like the 3DS. I'm looking at the Switch compared to a tablet or a phone or the other things mm-hmm. you could do 
when you're out and about. And even six hours feels low to me in this day and age. You know, like I can, your, an iPad can get easy, easily like eight hours. Um, and so I think that's, that to me feels like the hard, the hard choice is, are people going to want to take this device uh, when you can only get six hours? Like you're going to basically have to be tethered to a secondary battery, um, you know, because anytime I would want to play, I'm probably going to want to play for more than six hours. Um, yeah. Like I have a set of Bluetooth headphones that I think last four to six hours and it's already annoying compared to my other devices to have to charge those pretty much anytime I'm thinking about it just to make sure they don't die when I really need them. Um, and I don't know that the, maybe people, maybe people in Japan won't have a problem with this. Like, I don't know. Do they have, do they have access to places to charge devices more easily than in the U S like, I, I don't, so. I don't know how the demographics differ. Yeah. And, uh, I think what I'm going to start going by for the battery life is, uh, this is coming, I'm reading a GameSpot article right now. This is like an official Nintendo, uh, image saying like existing battery life. It can last more than six hours, but it varies. But for example, if you just sat down and played Breath of the Wild, it can last roughly three hours on a single charge, which I feel like just con this constant gameplay, I think that's what I'm going to go by is like about three hours of yeah. just consistent playing. But that, I mean, I can still vary. But uh, there, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. I don't know if you guys want to say anything more about the battery life. Or... No, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One more. I forgot to talk about the dock for the system. So uh what comes with when you buy the nintendo switch is the dock which i mean virtually any everybody is going to be using uh you sit it down uh the switch slides in via usb connection and then uh when you open up the dock you've got uh there's like a, a run through for hdmi ethernet and the ac adapter and uh so this you know connects to the tv and it also charges the joy con controllers so I ask you, gentlemen, uh, if you wanted to buy a, an additional dock, I'm assuming neither of you know this, what do you think the price would be for this dock? Just the dock that you sit it on with, uh, mm. I mean, assuming it contains no cables, which I don't, no, I don't no think it will. It's not no controller, no main system. It's just the dock. Just, just the one dock. Piece. You sit the system on. Presumably it comes with the AC adapter to plug right. in. What are we looking at? I'm going to I'm going to guess. I'm trying to think cuz they're con we are we know the price of their controllers. I'm trying to yeah. think it's probably higher than I would normally think. I'm going to say <laughs> I'm I'm going to say 150. That's what I was thinking too. Oh, yeah. 150. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> it's 90, so I mean okay, still, okay. 90 is still a lot, so you know, the ace I know the AC adapter by itself is 30. But uh yeah, it's. I, I still think. Yeah, I mean, you guys guess bigger, but I, I still think ninety dollars for just the dock to charge the controller. Well, I think and... that's ludicrous. But I was like, I was think, I was yeah. tricking myself. I was thinking like, <laughs> of course, it, you would be asking the question because we're going to be surprised how high it is. So I was aiming on the high side. Okay. Okay. But yeah, still, ninety feels pretty it, hefty. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, it's just it's a headache. <laughs> But yeah, anything else to anything else to add on the Switch? I know uh, we had that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild trailer, baby. That looked amazing. Oh my god, the voice acting! Holy <laughs> shit! Well, I mean, they're they're gonna. I hope it's amazing for their sake because that's basically the only game they have to buy on launch that I think Pretty most much. people are gonna care about. So, right. That's gonna have to be. Yeah. That's gonna have to keep them going at least for a few weeks until they can start trotting out other games. Um, yeah, I'll be very interested to see the sales. I mean, uh, what am I saying? Obviously, the Wii U is going to sell more, you know, but it's very tempting. You think so? Like, Wii, I think so because more people are in a Wii U. But then again, what Wii U games have come out in the past? You think six you months? think that that uh, that that Zelda is going to sell more copies on the Wii U than the Switch? Well, if it's a launch title for a new system and there are people who are hardcore, I mean, if they're, they're hardcore Nintendo people out there, they probably already own a Wii U and they're not giving it up. 
So if and they maybe at the time, perhaps they don't want to and I'm, maybe not lifetime sales, but for like the first week of people okay. who are like, they, oh, do I want to spend $60 on just the game or do I want to spend $360 on the game and the system? OK, OK, you that's know, fair. I think, I, I, if you're if you're just saying like, you know, in the first month or something, then there's I well, think those, there's a there's a chance. Those, those some those same people did the same thing with the Wii U, though. They bought they bought the console. That's true. Like that's stars, actually that's so, true. I think uh, so, it, seems, it seems like Nintendo grabs, fans just have. Yeah. It seems like these Nintendo fans have a propensity to just go ahead and buy the new system and play the new system for the handful of games that are Nintendo IP. You know, your Zelda, your Mario, your your maybe your one two Switch, right? Like the gimmick, the well, gimmicky first party stuff, Mario and Zelda, and then that's about it. And then you wait for the next system. I don't disagree with that. I just think, you know, this is the first time that the launch title has also been backwards compatible. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I think you may be right. Uh, I just, I think they... Well, not backwards compatible, you mean. I mean, I mean, re releasing on both systems. Right, right. I just don't think that many people have a Wii U. I think people will... I think if people are going to play Zelda and get excited about playing Zelda, they're probably going to want to buy a Switch. Is like it's okay. kind of it's you it's clearly going to be the best experience on a Switch, right? It's their only launch game. They're going to use that to sell the system. Yeah, I mean, I was watching Twitter too, like after the conference, like Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon, and GameStop were all sold out of pre-orders, and I think still are. Like, and they just keep restocking and they keep selling out. I do not remember that happening with the Wii U, but yeah. Okay. Um, this definitely feels like a like more excitement than the Wii U was. Uh, even though I think you know here on on I feel like our sentiment has been sort of neutral, um, but that's what I would have expected even before this uh, this announcement. Like I think we we generally take kind of a critical eye to these to these new systems the same way that we do with games. You know, pre ordering is uh, pre ordering can be uh, can be dangerous when it comes to right. protecting your money. I think we tend to look at things critically and and uh, see what see what holes we can poke in it, but um, but I think this has definitely been a lot more exciting launch or, or launch announcement than the Wii U. I think most people are most people are like neutral to positive, um, and it's not it's not a system that I think I'm going to buy at least not I mean not at the start. We'll see when it comes out, yeah. but it's just not it's not a system that appeals to me. But that also doesn't surprise me because the Wii didn't really appeal to me and the Wii U didn't really appeal to me. Like it's just a different, it's, it's not a system for the way that I play games, uh, but it's, it's sort of uh, expected, I think, from what Nintendo typically offers, which is like, you're going to get a new Zelda and a Mario and people are going to buy it for just that reason. Some people are going to buy it for kind of the gimmicky, fun, casual stuff. Um, and then they're going to have to prove out why everyone in the middle should buy it as well. And I think that's like where the long tail comes in. That are they going to be able to sell these systems a year a year after launch? And that remains to be seen. Mm. Okay. All right. So pretty healthy discussion about it. Yeah, I'm sure, and I'm sure we'll see more come out here in the next few weeks. Because um, this was basically sure. the big the big knowledge dump uh, about all these new details. Oh, yeah. So they're probably going to be clarifying a whole bunch of things and. Uh, and I'm sure they'll be teasing more stuff uh, now that they're they're basically in the the launch hype cycle uh, with less than two months to go until it does launch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, March third, that is the uh, official date of the Nintendo Switch wa launch. Yeah. So if you want to get a pre order in, uh, like like Brad was saying, good luck. It seems like they're they're kind of hit and miss. Um, obviously, a lot of demand. But we don't really know how much of that is real uh, with Nintendo uh, because they right. were sold out of those the classic NES things. Uh, that seemed to be a, a supply problem. So you never really know with Nintendo. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure I'm sure the people that want to pre-order you you'll find a way to pre-order. Uh, what do you say we get into a few quick hits that are non-Nintendo related? Uh, that sounds uh, this sounds like a good way to switch it up. <laughs> oh, oh man, what oh, a solid what a on. solid segue. I was actually I I was gonna mention that in their press conference. I realized that you know it's sort of the 
the press conference is geared to the Japanese viewer, and then it was just like dubbed with English, uh, you know, English translation over it. Um, but <laughs> every time they were they were saying like, and now let's switch to something else, and they have this, oh, they so like bad. it's <laughs> it's it's so bad it's funny because it's clear it's clear that they're they're playing it up, and and they know that it's obvious and stupid. So I I didn't like it, but also I was like, that's so dumb. It's almost it's almost cute. Uh, yeah, I did yeah, love that... when uh, Suda Fifty One came out, and uh, just everyone in the chat's like, "What the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> it's crazy." And then you have the one translator who we got stuck with, which uh, it was less than exemplary exemplary performance from him. I don't know. <laughs> did you guys know what I'm talking about? It was. Uh, there were times where he just gave up translating, yeah. and he said that that so was actually important. the translate the translation and sort of the the fact that it was a person a person who was clearly like remote and kind of watching it along with us and translating for the stream. It was pretty funny uh, getting to kind of see some of the emotion from that person. Um, yeah, because it wasn't like someone. It wasn't that the person was on stage or anything. It was clearly like a person watching from a remote location or something. Right. Uh, anyway, great, great segue, which I derailed by not actually talking about the thing that we're talking about next. Um, Microsoft uh, and Windows 10, we've, we've talked a little bit before about uh, the upcoming so-called creators update for Windows 10, which is uh, a big update they're pushing that has a lot of different uh, a lot of different things. I forget what all it has. Do you remember, Brad, like what, what the, the main things no, it's going to have in it? All. It's um. Anyway, it's a big Windows 10 update that's coming soon, and there is. It's been confirmed uh, that there is going to be a game mode. That's what it's called, game mode. Uh, okay. And we don't know. The thing is, we don't know exactly what it's going to do. Uh, but the guess is that it will be some sort of mode that uh, that makes the primary game being played uh like the focus of your system resources so uh i don't i guess i don't really know how big of a problem this is because you know we i have a pretty beefy home computer uh but i imagine on a lot of uh probably a lot of laptops that come with a bunch of crapware or you know people that run stuff in the background and they don't realize how much they're running in the background uh yeah. you know people that have dozens of background apps running uh I imagine that when they're trying to play a game, you know, the, I guess a good example would be like when you're trying to play a game and you're you're running a virus scan. Uh, when your virus scan is wrapping against your hard drive and your game is trying to load a level from your hard drive, uh, your right. game will slow down a whole lot, you know. And that's like a classic example from back in the day when uh, people ran virus scans all the time, you know, because viruses were taking over the world. Uh, but so I imagine that that situation probably still happens to a lot of people where there will be background processes that take a whole bunch of CPU and RAM resources and stuff. So maybe this game mode will focus on uh, kind of not letting those processes get, you know, take over resources the way that they can currently, which is kind of just like in Windows is basically a free for all, like however many resources you have and the apps, that you're, the, the programs you're running, they just compete for the resources you've got. Uh, so th this again, we don't know exactly what it does. That's kind of a guess, but uh, hopefully we'll have some more details on that because that sounds like a uh, a reasonable feature to add. Um, and I'm actually surprised that nothing like that already exists because this is actually this is arguably less of a problem now than it ever has been. This was actually a much bigger problem, I think, in uh, like t 2008 or 2009. When uh, you know when everyone was still using uh, physical hard drives instead of SSDs um, and that sort of thing, so I don't know how how important do you think is that to people like upgrading to Windows 10? Do you, I don't I don't know that anyone's really going to upgrade based on this feature, but I guess Microsoft has to keep adding uh, adding new things. They they clearly want gamers to upgrade to Windows 10. Do you think this is going to have any effect? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think this is also remember Microsoft's all about like trying to unify the experience. So the this this new Windows 10 game mode thing is trying to bring it closer to the Xbox. So um, I think one of the quote unquote selling features was being able to 
stream easily using their their new services that they uh, acquired. Um, what was it called? Beam. Mm -hmm. They acquired Beam, so you'll be able to. I don't know. I don't. To be honest, if you're not already gaming, like without the Windows 10 game mode, like I don't think. Like this, this isn't gonna just magically push you over, right? So, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, I guess we'll have to see exactly what it's going to do, um, and especially if, I mean, the worst, in my opinion, the worst case uh, scenario here would be that like game mode will only work appropriately for games that are from the Windows Store. That would be that. Mm -hmm. That would basically make it like we're kind of wasting our time even talking about it. But my hope right. is that that's not the case, but my fear is that that might be the case. Like that they use this as one more reason to you know, try and get people to buy things from the Windows Store because the you can take advantage of game mode and that'll give you the best experience. And we all know that's probably not reality, but that that's I hope that doesn't happen. Like I hope this the, I hope this is an actual useful thing that people can take advantage of, you know, for games they already own. Um like I described, but I don't know. We'll we'll see. Maybe this is all to do about nothing, because <laughs> because Microsoft hasn't actually said anything about it except that there is a game mode, but they haven't said what it is. You know, I see this and I think like a TV trying to sell me having a game mode option on it, where <laughs> yeah, it's literally that's true. Like different yeah. lighting, just like <laughs> hey, get our TV, or Microsoft's like hey, get Windows Ten. Yeah, but, uh, I, you're right. I hope it's not. I hope it's not something like that where it's sort of a a gimmicky type thing um, or something that can't that can't be used by steam or origin or Battle.net or any of the existing games because um, i actually think that there there could be some useful stuff you could do on the system level uh especially now that uh like laptops are getting even even uh regular laptops are getting to have reasonable uh like graphical performance um something like this could be really seriously useful if you're looking to play a game on a, you know a laptop with integrated graphics if you can if you can make sure that other things don't steal process priority and you know take up balloon your ram resource or try and uh, wrap against your hard drive like all that could be really useful on a, a lower spec pc or on a laptop but i just fear that i fear that i'm giving them too much credit that that's that's probably not going to be what it does, but if it does, hey, I you know we'll we'll talk about it again and I'll give them credit. But I hope that I hope that it's not just a marketing thing that they're uh, talking up because gamers they they think it'll get gamers excited and then it's actually nothing. But I guess it remains to be seen. Like I said, Microsoft has only confirmed that there is a game mode. They have not confirmed what it does, as far as I can tell. So uh, speaking of Xbox and Microsoft, uh, Halo Wars 2 multiplayer beta is showcased. I'm just reading literally the headline that that, uh, that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brad wrote here. The Halo Wars 2 multiplayer beta is showcasing a new card-based game mode called Blitz. It will be available on Windows 10 and Xbox One on January 20th. That's literally came... the exact text from Major Nelson's tweet. So why don't you yeah, fill us in, Brad? Straight. Yeah, this came straight from your boy, Major Nelson. You know, n who who wants to go through the major news outlets anymore when you can just <laughs> follow Major Nelson? Um, I don't know. This is getting slowly hyped up, Halo Wars 2, uh, because it's Halo coming to the PC, right? So, I mean, um, I honestly, I just thought maybe this would be a good little tasty quick hit that hey you might actually be able to play some uh some halo even though it's a stupid card game thing um but you know what if you need some halo in your life major nelson's got your back okay so i didn't realize Thanks, that man. there was that there was going to be a card halo game so i mean i'm i'm curious to see how they make a card game out of the halo franchise but uh you know, they're just taking note from Nintendo on like how to listen to their audience and fans. And so oh, is that first, 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 when they were like, you know, we should make Halo into an RTS, you know, they wanted to take it to the next level. And they're like, mm. our fans really love um, card games, too. So they just like, 
you know what? When people look for the thrilling first person shooter experience that Halo gives them, let's give them an RTS card game experience <laughs> um, that Major Nelson delivers. So, well, you got to listen to your fans. So, if he doesn't um, make an appearance in the game, then um, no download for me, buddy. <laughs> Major <laughs> Nelson himself. <laughs> like, are you, you in the like game? That's what I'm a tweet. Are you in game? <laughs> well, if you should, not, uh, no buy. You should just, just respond to him, him respond to his game. tweet, and let him know. I bet he cares a lot about your opinion. I will. I'll type it right now on the KB My podcast. Uh, and our last quick hit here uh, is more more just a PSA uh, because I know a lot of our listeners probably are familiar with ESEA, and if you play CS:GO, you might have an ESEA account. Uh, unfortunately, ESEA uh, was hacked, and uh, this is not, I mean, organizations getting hacked is not uncommon in this day and age, but uh, lots of information got taken. Uh, there's actually, I guess, a story behind it. Uh, it got, they, there was a $100,000 ransom demanded by the person who stole the information, and uh, ESEA refused to pay the ransom, uh, and so the hacker released the information that he had, I suppose, uh, or it, it is available somewhere, uh, probably on the dark, you know, the dark corners of the internet. Uh, it included usernames, emails, private messages, IPs, uh, mobile phone numbers. If you sign up for SMS messages, forum posts, hash passwords, hash secret question answers. Uh, so I mean, basically, a pretty pretty uh, full dump of lots of information. Uh, I'm guessing if you had an ESEA account that was affected, hopefully you got an email or something about this. But uh, needless to say, you should uh, probably reset your password for ESEA. And by all means, if you share that password with any other service, uh, one, stop doing that because that's the worst thing you can do. But uh, also change your password on those services too. So, uh, and uh, maybe maybe play a better game. But yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get into a taste discussion here, but I mean, I, I have an ESEA account. I think I was part of this breach, um, but I don't believe I received an email or anything. So, um, the, the, ha the passwords were hashed. Uh, and so they, hopefully they did not get your real password, but again, you should use, uh, an abundance of caution in situations like this and just reset that password and any other service that shares that password. Uh, hopefully they didn't, they didn't they didn't pull a sony and save your password in a text file so you know N yes they did not do that uh so not 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 that there's much comfort there uh because they still got <laughs> a fair amount of you know reasonably sensitive information but um you know that's i guess that's the world we live in no one's safe uh so transition from that into uh some new releases uh, i mean i some real, some real big hitters this week, KD. Why don't you tell us about them? All right, I will. Uh, I'll take over here. The first one is uh, called Urban Empire. This is uh, from First Time Developer Reborn Interactive, but it's being published by Calypso, which uh, have made all the uh, the Tropico games. This is another. I was about to say it looks uh, very like Civ Tropico y like. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's a it's like a city builder management game, but uh yeah, it's uh I mean Calypso, they obviously know what they're doing. You know. Uh it's uh the just the synopsis here. Urban Empire is a city ruler pioneering a new breed of strategy game that combines city builder features with political scheming and adds profound social and historical events into the mix, creating a whole new gameplay perspective, which uh there's definitely some uh some potential here to uh like kind of combine those two elements to make something good yeah, but uh yeah cool. uh, you know what honestly i'm having a tough time here my push to talk is control and i'm trying to scroll through this <laughs> but anytime i do it just zooms it out to 10 percent. <laughs> so uh forgive some pregnant pauses here and there but uh yeah <laughs> oh my god be a mayor player just found Ooh. that in the description Boom. and that that's right play. up there with switching it up but uh, yeah, this game comes out January 20th. It's going to be $39.99, but if you pre-order it, you get 15% off. Holy fuck. How That's generous. a lot of money you're saving. Think of all the CSGO skins you could buy. 
that amount of money. A lot of battle scarred skins, let me tell you. Uh, speaking of battle scarred, you've got Don Bradman's Cricket 17 <laughs> releasing on uh, today, actually. Did you practice uh, these pro- segues? You're really on a roll. I I mean, I get I prepare this a week prior, <laughs> and I just go over and over. But yeah, unlocking in 15 hours is Don Bradman's Cricket 17. Now, if there's one game that's been missing from our PC gaming experience, or just gaming in general, uh, is at least in mainstream audience, is a solid cricket experience. I mean, when I hear of cricket, I have genuinely no idea how this game works i'm looking at the trailer and now i see men with bats throwing balls at each other there's a large amount of people just missing the ball and then there's suddenly people are picking it up and throwing at each other it's absolute madness that uh you can capture on your game pc uh on january 16th i do want to so, say is- kudos to these guys because one you can download a demo which yes. is not something you see every day so thank you um and two their reviews that they chose to feature (laughs) i was just gonna mention that are interesting because they're actually not that great but they chose (laughs) to feature them anyways 7.2 out of 10 7 (laughs) out of 10 (laughs) it's like oh okay we we're admitting that this is a c game but (laughs) like uh and and we're we're okay with that. Um, I appreciate that the <laughs> team behind Don Bradman Cricket Seventeen are realistic enough to know that you know real high reviews probably going to be unlikely for the cricket genre, but uh, you know featuring the seven, the eight out of ten, uh, you know it's 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 a very realistic perspective. I think that they're being even handed about what this game offers you. You know. That's true. You know, honesty is what we're really sorely missing in the. PC gaming community. But uh, yeah, download the demo. Uh, see what Don Bradman has to offer you. I also have to say, I'm sorry to cut you off. But no, go for it. These system specifications are like really oddly specific. Like, like if you go down below, they even have like minimum a Pentium dual core CPU uh, at three gigahertz or AMD. Like they, they must have had like just a fleet of processors or something that they tested or something like that. Cause it's like a, a Radeon <laughs> six, six, six seventy. Like who, who in their arsenal has this? Why don't you just say like a GTX 1050 or something or a GTX 950? Like, like yeah. why are you, why are you doing a graphics card from who knows how long ago? But these are really oddly specific specifications <laughs> here. There's just know. a lot of really odd touches throughout the Steam page. Like the the main description ends with "You are invincible." <laughs> just <laughs> all right. And when you go to the about this game at the very bottom, there's a note. Note: You must be connected to the internet to boot this game. You may disconnect from the internet once at the main menu. Uh-huh. Like, oh, maybe that's a bug they haven't worked out. This, hey, listen. You might get disconnected once. Like that's in the where they're trying to sell you know, on the they're game. They're telling they're like, telling you, you you can disconnect. Like you have to be online for the game to launch, oh, but then you can like go off. Yeah. I yeah. see, I see. All right. I mean, but, I prefer uh, my reading. I mean, props to props to them for creating a new one, because uh, it looks like the last game in the series was Don Bradman Cricket fourteen, and then I guess they took a <laughs> oh. you know three year hiatus. But uh, according to Press good, Start, good. gave it a seven out of ten. And said it's a solid improvement on Don Bradman Cricket 14. Uh, you know, there aren't any groundbreaking improvements or dramatic <laughs> gameplay changes in the sequel. <laughs> There's enough to keep users satisfied through the summer and beyond. So, I, you know what? Honestly, I think if you played the last game in the series, Don Bradman Cricket 14, I feel like they're giving you a pretty realistic perspective about what Don Bradman Cricket 17 offers, which is slightly better than Don Bradman Cricket 14. <laughs> yes that's you know that's all you really need at the end i'm actually really glad you decided to feature this because while i have to imagine our listeners probably on the whole don't care about cricket games this has actually been pretty enlightening like i feel like this is a, a pretty honest steam page awesome yeah <laughs> all right so yeah you can get your hands on don, Brad- don bradman cricket 17 in 15 hours 
And uh, all right, next up is the newest game in the Warhammer 40k series, which is a series I have not touched, but I know is uh, uh, highly regarded, or at least, you know, uh, appreciated by a lot of people. Uh, the newest one is Warhammer 40k Sanctus Reach, which uh, sounds just a bit juvenile. I mean, there's there's some potential there. Sanctus Reach. Am I the only one that gets like a certain, you know, Okay, never mind. All right, so Sanctus what, Reach. What do you think it sounds like? Sanctus. I, you know, I can't place it. You trying to make an Sanctus anus joke Reach. or something? I don't get it. It's something, but then like Sanctus Sphincter. You oh, know? Okay. Wow. Uh, reach. Okay. That's, I would. Say, it's speaking of making know, I'm a, a reach. Sick mind. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Now that that was what. <laughs> I'm glad we. I'm glad we made that point. If we got that far. But uh, yeah, Sanctus Reach is a 3D turn-based strategy game, quote, like you've never seen before. Fast, immediate, deep, impressive to look at, incredibly fun. Uh, yeah, it's a 3D turn-based strategy game. Uh, it doesn't really look like it. It absolutely looks like something. Yeah, I was, seen I was about to say a 3D turn-based strategy game like you've never seen from our other 3D turn-based strategy <laughs> games. Yeah. Like, like uh, okay. But. Yeah. So yeah, nothing. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure how much I can add. I didn't know if one of you guys were into Warhammer or not. But I mean, I, I've I've played them back in the day. Like I played Dawn of War, um, but I feel like that at this point that was a very long time ago. Uh, I feel like the Warhammer 40k games that there have been a lot of them, but none of them have really had a ton of fanfare. Like I didn't even realize this was coming out, but uh, maybe it's just. I don't know. I don't know how much uh, how much weight the four, the Warhammer 40k universe really holds um, in this day and age, but I mean, it looks like a it looks like a competent game. Uh, well, based on the screenshots, which there aren't that many, but uh, I feel like if you're into 3D turn based strategy games, you're you either you either have this pre order locked and loaded, or you're just your eyes have glossed over already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to backtrack here, but I started downloading the Don Bradman Cricket 17 <laughs> demo. It's seven gigs. Ooh. Wow. They must well, give you the whole cost. game and then like Yeah, that might be it. I mean if you look at the if you look at the trailer here, there's some some decent graphics. Look at the <laughs> look at the screenshot. You can see the you can see the uh the seam on the cricket ball. <laughs> I mean, like yeah, like they said impressive. in the like they said in the review, it's a it's a solid improvement on Don Bradman Cricket fourteen. Uh, that hey, makes me. Sorry. I'm loading up. I'm looking at like Don Bradman th Cricket fourteen on Steam. Can we also? Know, I just Don Bradman Cricket fourteen is forty dollars. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> hey, it's, Are you kidding it's, me? It's, uh... It's got a very positive review on Steam. You know, it could be worth the money. It came out oh, two and a half years ago. $40 for that game. Hmm. But they did have some better yeah. reviews for that one. Big Ant Studios has redefined the genre of cricket. <laughs> <laughs> really? That garnered from the an 85. the ocean of cricket games to choose from, Don Bradman Cricket stands out. I mean, hey, I guess, I guess. Look, I can't think of another cricket game. Can you? No. Lazy Gamer no. said best cricket game of this generation. Now I don't know if, out of context, they might have they might have also said it's the only cricket game of this generation, but we'll never know. That was two and a half years ago. <laughs> All right, God, I'm just fascinated by this trailer <laughs> for Don Bradman Cricket 14 because. Like they have like the things for like the, the characters moving, but the camera is locked on their heads. It just I can't describe it. It looks yeah, you look up the trailer. It just I bet, it looks I bet someone right now is going and, and getting Don Bradman Cricket and trying it out. Somewhere in the world they're buying it. They're downloading the demo. I mean, yeah, someone on the cast is even downloading the demo. Man. Yeah, well. They're really reaching people. Maybe you know what? Mark my words is gonna be on the top of the Top sellers once it launches. <laughs> we'll They've see. redefined the genre once, they'll do it again. 
have to keep an eye out on the next Steam sale for this one. But uh, lastly, on our uh, <clears throat> new release list, we've Wait, got this, this game. We've got a game called Messiah. Now, uh, this game is this actually came out in uh, 2000 on the PC, but it's seeing a, a resurgence on Steam. It's being released uh, on January 16th in 13 hours. Uh, uh, I want to preface this with uh, a small clip, a little snippet from the About This Game. Uh, it describes this as a grim cyberpunk atmosphere with a touch of the divine. So uh, from what I can gather from what I'm looking at here, uh, this is the game where you play as uh, a puto or a puto, which uh, if you're not familiar, I mean, you'll, you're familiar, not maybe not with the name. It's one of those uh, chubby male children from uh, maybe some biblical paintings. You know, y you've definitely what seen them before. The Cupid's been described. Like. It's called a, a puto, like a puto. That's like the official word for, I mean, what that's called. Really? It, it's just a chubby male child. It's Not usually a cherub? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's also, yeah, I see. It's also called a cherub. <laughs> okay what i mean I, I i don't blame people for not knowing what the official no, I've, I've just is. never i've never heard the word you're using to describe a cherub so i'm just i was <laughs> interested okay. in that. Uh... i've never i've never heard the word cherub used before so okay might be... okay well uh let's oh, okay. <laughs> yeah okay well <laughs> let's continue. basically you've got a cherub flying through a cyberpunk factory with a machine gun uh he's this the plot his name is bob he's an angel or ordered by god himself to go and clean up the putrid world of the future he can sneak up on any person animal or genetically engineered being and leap right into their souls uh this game yeah we're going from cricket to a cherub with a machine gun i have I don't really think there's any more to say about this game. This is one of those weird games. Uh, this is like the beauty of video games because anything is possible. Like people say, I hear this discussion sometimes. Like you, you ever thinking like, you know, 10, 20 years, people are just going to run out of ideas. You know, everything's going to be explored. And then I see little chubby naked baby angels with machine guns going through a factory killing people. So I believe there's still hope in this genre, people. Yeah, I uh, haven't exhausted all the ideas yet. That's true. Yeah. But uh yeah, that game comes out. I mean, technically it's out now. So, I mean, it just came out originally in 2000. So, if you wanted to, there's got to be a way you can find that game now. I'm so sure this you've game had, is you've most... had 17 years to play it. So, <laughs> you should know yeah. what you're getting into. <laughs> Where have you been? I like the supported right. operating systems are like Windows XP, Vista, and then Windows 10. Yeah, there's this big <laughs> note about 10 saying like, oh, I missed it. Where is it? So like, There's something talking about like, if you want to play this, you'll have countless, you'll have a bunch of different like errors or updates for it. Pretty obviously not intended to be ran on Windows 10. But uh, but, but it's there. Yeah, it's there if you want it. I, I can only imagine what the price of this will be. But yeah, that's going to do it for our new releases. Still nothing too good yet this year. Yeah, I feel like we're uh, we're still... I mean, <laughs> aside from uh, Dom Bradman Cricket 17, obviously <laughs> yeah, the, no, the rest of the releases this week, you know. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's we're still kind of, uh, kind of cranking up toward the... I feel like the, a lot of stuff t comes out in the spring. Um, so we're... There will be more to come. But uh, for now, we have, uh, let's see, we had, well, we basically have really just one viewer question because uh, we had a couple of viewer questions about the Switch, um, but I think we pretty much covered, we covered that pretty thoroughly uh, earlier on. So just a single viewer question this week. You guys need to do better next week, uh, and we will, you know, we'll hope, hope to hear from you next week. Uh, but our question this week is from Not So Ordinary Gamer, NSO Gamer on Twitter. He asks, any advice for someone who is kind of stuck and doesn't know what they want to do with their life? 
asking for a friend. Hmm. Hmm. Well, um, I'm definitely not the person to ask right now because I'm in in that same spot. Are you the friend he's talking about? No. Oh. <laughs> Let me. Think what about here. you, KD? What's your advice uh, for someone who is stuck, stuck, doesn't know what they want to do with their life? Uh, I would, I would say just kind of force yourself to try different things. I mean, uh, hmm. Are you advocating just, drug use? I'm not. I'm not outright saying that, but it's pretty heavily implied. I mean. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, no. Um, yeah. Just try a bunch of different things. I mean, <laughs> don't know what. I mean, find something. Sound like drugs. I don't know why. <laughs> try a bunch of different. Okay, I'll have to be more specific. Uh, consume a bunch of different opportunities. Boom. How about that? Nope. Still drugs. Um, <laughs> you know, just find uh. Any anything that interests you, you know, just give it a try. Uh, you know, just look at what you're passionate about. Like I'm passionate about video games. You know, for the longest time, like my mind's pretty made up right now. I really, I honestly do want to get into game development with my life. That's uh, I mean, for the longest time, I was thinking, you know, oh, I can't do game development. That's such a, I'm a, I'm a fucking nerd if I do that. I need to. Look but then you like made Barn Door Quest. Legitimate. That's true. Yeah. Then I began a journey into no. <laughs> Uh, but no, and then I realized, you know, if I don't stick with this, if it's, this is what I really want to do, I've got one life to live and I don't want to spend my entire life regretting that, you know, going for something that I wasn't truly passionate about. So I would just, you know, try a bunch of different things. You know, you could end up like, uh, uh, what's his name on Parks and Rec where he did the stop motion films for a bit that didn't work out too well, but you know, he, uh, moved forward in his life because he tried it. I uh, think. I think the biggest thing that I hear from a lot of people that like give up opportunities that they like kick themselves from for not doing is like they weren't willing to move from their like hometown to try go do something or change their life completely. Um, and I see that a lot, like even from my friends that even work at Twitch, they're like, um, they're like, oh, I don't know if I really want to work for Twitch. Like it'd be a, a dream job, but I don't know if I can move to California. It's like, well, you need to, it's nothing's, nothing's going to come to you. You need to go out and, mm -hmm. and make an effort to change your life if you want to change it. Like, that's the thing. So it's like the world isn't going to work in your favor. So you kind of need to go out and seek a change. And that might involve moving somewhere. That might mean dropping what you're doing right now and committing your life to something else. So I, I don't know. Uh, I take risks. I think that's, um, and if you don't like what you're doing right now, then drop it. Yeah, I, th I, think, I that's... think that's pretty good advice. I mean, some of that, it's like some of that kind of sounds cliche, but it's, uh, I think it is really true that you have to, you have to think about why, why you're stuck and, and think about whether you might be stuck because you're not willing to take, you know, a, a slightly larger risk or put yourself out there. Um, I think when you when you say you don't know what to do with your life, it's like, well, you, you almost certainly have something you're passionate about. Like, if, I mean, if you have literally no passions, then that, that's a hard place to start. But uh, if there are things you enjoy doing and you want to you wanna pursue those, I think it's sort of, a, it's sort of like I, I liken it to uh, people saying they always want to, like they always want to get into shape, they always want to exercise, but then you don't actually go to the gym like you don't actually ever take that first step, and if you're stuck, yeah. if you're stuck, the, like the answer is you can choose to change that any day you want, right? You have to just choose to start down the path of changing it. But it's easy to not change it. It's easy to just say like, ah, eh, you know, I don't really know what I want to do. I'll kind of, I'll think about it tomorrow. It's easy to procrastinate. It's easy to do all of that. And doing the easy exactly. things is the is what keeps you kind of in that limbo. Um, right. And so I think that's the. That's why like taking risks is, it can be scary, but once you, once you kind of commit to taking a risk, then like, then you have to follow through on it. You know, uh, like for instance, taking a job in, in a city you don't live in or something like once you choose to, once you agree to take that job, you're like, oh, well now I've got to, I've got to adapt. I've got to, you know, I got myself into the situation. Now I've got to deal with it. And sometimes it's just getting yourself over that hump that is 
that is the first step. And then once you take the first step, you realize you can't go back from it. Uh, and so you have to learn to adapt and you have, you know, you have to really get, you have to get moving. Um, and so I think the, the other guy's advice is really pertinent to, you know, to my life. I, I kind of took one of those chances, took a calculated risk, uh, moved to a state that I wasn't familiar with, uh, you know, left friends and family, um, you know, on, in, the, in the middle of the country and I moved to the West Coast. And uh, I think that's the, for me, it's, it's uh, easy to say, it's easy to say looking back, but it was a pretty hard decision at the time. And uh, mm-hmm. something that I think that I think is a good uh, a good cliche motivational quote to give you for this question is that uh, you will only regret the the things you don't do. Like you're only yeah. you will only regret the stuff that you didn't do. Uh, you know, staying behind or you know declining a risk or something. You very rarely ever uh, regret taking one of those risks. Um, so. Yeah, a lot of a lot of motivational I, speech. I remember talking to um, so there's an electronic artist. His name is Tycho. Well, he was one person, but then it became a band. Anyways, uh, I found out he was actually um, a PC enthusiast, like a gaming enthusiast. And a lot of people don't know that, but I was going to get him on the cast to talk about that, anyways. But um, I had a conversation with him, and I asked if he gamed. And he said, no, not anymore. And I was like, why? He was like, I knew that, like, for me and my personality, gaming got in the way of what I wanted to do because I was just so focused on, like, spending time gaming. And I knew that I had, like, this ambition, this dream. And I recognized that, like, he he just had to cut it out from his life to be able to do what he wanted to do. And now he's a Grammy-nominated artist. So, I mean... um, I don't know. There's a lot that I think as a person, if you're stuck, you just kind of, like Brandon said, you kind of have to analyze what's keeping you there and then, um, you know, move forward with another risk. <laughs> and, and, think, and just think mm-hmm. about, I think if you actually, if you're actually serious about uh, kind of getting unstuck, think about the actionable steps you can take that would move you in the direction you want to be. Mm-hmm. And, and, I think the you have to turn you have to turn this idea you have about being stuck and like oh one day maybe like for instance you know KD like oh one day I want to be a game designer I want to do this or do that uh, there mm-hmm. there are actions you could take literally this second as you listen to this cast that would change the course of oh, your absolutely. your trajectory to do that right you could sign up for classes you could like buy a, I don't know if you want to be a uh, an illustrator or something like you could go go buy paint or you could go like you could literally go you could start toward the thing you want to do right now um but then you'll probably say like oh well i mean i don't know it's like 10 p.m you know i I, well maybe maybe there's literally (laughs) you can't do it right this second but you know what i mean (laughs) uh you could literally get started get started or or like you could you know you could order the thing off amazon that like you need to start practicing or whatever you could do it like right this second um Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy. It's just easy to procrastinate, and that's what you will continue doing unless you are actually serious about making a change. And that commitment, I think, is probably what separates the people who stay stuck to the people who get unstuck. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll add a bit more on that. Like overcoming those like hurdles and doing things that you normally would be like really apprehensive. Like for example, like right now, I, I took a position for a job as a manager. And I would have never seen myself doing that, but I did it anyways. And it was tough and I struggled, but I learned because of it, I'm better for it. And uh, like, for example, you know, I was invited on the podcast, like I was a huge fan. I never did a podcast before in my life. Only speaking I did was on my shitty YouTube channel where it's all, you know, pre-recorded. And I go back to, you know, I was at episode 201. I was first on and I cringe so hard because like, I mean, I was terrible back then, but I worked and i realized what i was like doing wrong and i i, mean, I like to think i'm doing a lot better now than i was you think about then, how bad so. he is now can you only imagine when he first started <laughs> yeah i know yeah that's the <clears throat> yeah um yeah but i mean another thing too as far as you know doing the steps you or like taking the steps you need to get started on things you have the most powerful resource in front of you right now the internet it is like like for example me 
I mean, I took a couple of years of Japanese in high school. I mean, I can I can read it. I just uh, I'm not fluent by any means. But it, so I like worked with what I had. Uh, I ended up getting through, you know, some crazy luck, uh, a Japanese copy of uh, Pokemon Emerald, which uh, being able to read everything in there and, uh, you know, Pokemon, it's being made like pretty well for like kids to understand. Uh, like that's a, a resource I can use and you can literally like download a ROM of it and go through that. Like, for example, learning another language, uh, start like what I'm getting at is like immerse yourself in like what is uh, like for that other medium medium. I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but anyways, the point I'm making is that you have so many resources right now you can use to go towards things like that. Just try to get yourself involved in a lot of different communities uh, because they're just like so many things you can do to help towards and for like game and uh, game development too countless unity tutorials unreal tutorials it's just like i had some college uh, professors uh at, like all the time that just say like uh i got this job as opposed to the other person because i literally like i did i did more than what was asked of me like i using you know youtube tutorials online tutorials things like that there's just they're just boundless resources resources for you to use for things like that I know I went off on a tangent there, but uh, oh, it's yeah. good. It's good advice. I think, uh, yeah, you're the, the only person who is gonna who's gonna take uh, who's gonna kind of take charge uh, of your life is gonna be you. So you yeah. can kind of choose to continue continue on the path you're now you're on now, or if you want to make a change, the only person holding you back is gonna be yourself. So that's uh, man, quite a motivational question, but uh, but a good question. I mean, we only had one this week, so we dug deep. I feel like there's some good stuff in there. Uh, hope, hope your friend, uh, not so. Hope your friend finds what it is that he needs to get unstuck. Um, so that brings us to the end of the podcast. Here we have, uh, we would normally have an iTunes review. We did not have any new reviews, uh, but we did have a mysterious email from. Uh, I believe our reviewer last week. I'm guessing he listened. Uh, he listened to the review, and must have must have realized that he couldn't fit all of it in the uh, the body of the review. So we have kind of an honorable mention. This is not a review, but uh, but we we will let this one slide. Uh, for a, I believe what is a continuation of uh, our poem from last week. So KD, would you do us the honors? Oh, oh shit. I was not ready. Here we go. Let's do this, baby. <laughs> All right. So uh, this email is from the one and only Charles Deep Dickens Hodes. Uh, he says, I hasten to leave. Patrick intended to blow past security. And he realized there wasn't a soul there to see. Trying the front door, he found it. He found it did not waver. After checking his phone, he realized the situation was graver. Patrick had no connectivity with which which he found strange. EA's Wi-Fi and cell booster had beta <laughs> shotgun range. <laughs> <laughs> then suddenly he heard a sound that chilled him to the bone. He was enchanted by this mysterious tone. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderball. I am you ain't Grizz baby, the spirit of podcasts past. <laughs> Bringing you pro mod news and the love for man ass. I am here to show you a moment from the years gone by to remind you of a scene that may soon die. More than a decade we must go back to the year 2005, back to the day this boy's passion survived. Yes, that's Timmy. <laughs> one of your lead developers that if it weren't for Battlefield 2 mods would have become a shit ass dick redditor. <laughs> <laughs> Returned to his office, Patrick stood there confounded, saying, I don't understand. The spirits responded to the fate of many like Timmy resides in your hands. Then in a puff of smoke, the spirit had gone when inhaled these fumes. Patrick hit like a bomb. <laughs> that was world class yet again. Oh my. wow, <laughs> that is excellent job. 
I, I I don't even I don't even know if this uh, if this poem is done. I feel like there could be more to it. But that's oh. that's impressive. If we could get future poems of this quality, this is I mean this week? is this is very high quality stuff. It really is. Like I'm not shitting around. This is like some good writing goes into this. <laughs> like the I mean the line Patrick had no connectivity, which he found strange. EA's Wi-Fi and cell booster has beta shotgun range. That's that's like a good rhyme and also like actually a really Love solid, it. like very clever line. Yeah. Oh man. Charles, thank you. Please come man. again. Please. I had well, no I, I had no idea that we had such a poet on our hands here in the Hodes family. But uh <laughs> you know, there's so many of them, they all pursue different passions. Yeah, I mean, look, going back to the question from not so, I mean, you want to you want to become a poet? Like you can do it. You could do that. You could do that right now. You could <laughs> start writing this second. Family. You could start you could start your Tumblr right this second. <laughs> oh, or you God. could send us you could send us an iTunes review that has a, a a poem about, you know, the gaming industry, about something else you're passionate about, who knows. But uh, thank you, Charles, for, for that email. Uh, if you want to leave us a review, KD, how can they do it? If you want to leave a review, you have to go to iTunes.com, find the KB Mod podcast, uh, let us know. It could be, you could type literally anything to us. It could be a nice uh, heartfelt message. It could be an honest criticism. It could be a problem you have with, with a certain cast member. It could be anything. There's only one requirement you need to fulfill and you have to give us a five star rating which is a very simple task to achieve it takes One just as much effort to click the star. other star ratings as it does to click five yes. there's no reason not to click five you don't even have to like the podcast at a level of a five star rating i mean we would like that that's what we hope for but if you want your podcast to make it through we just need to that needs to be done. Yeah, so it's a prerequisite. And then you can you can leave end. leave all of your your you know your comments about the cast. If you hate the cast, by all means, five star rating and put it in the comments. Tell us everything we do wrong. Yes. No problem. It could be the most cancerous post. I mean, it probably won't make it to the cast. I mean, but if you want it at least be honestly considered. It might yeah. make it. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah, that our bar our bar has been low before. So, listen. You don't. You don't have to. You don't have to provide a poem of Charles's quality here. Like this, I would say this is some of the highest quality stuff we've gotten. Uh, but look, if you know, you the world is your oyster. The review is your oyster. Right? It's your chance to uh, to let us know what you want to share with us and with the world potentially. So please do leave us a review if you haven't already. And uh, I think that's gonna do it for this episode 262 of the KB Mod podcast. Uh, we should be back next week. Same time, same place. We do this uh, live every Sunday night uh, at 10 p.m. Eastern time. So you can catch us live on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash KB Mod. Uh, if you want to follow us and uh, hear from us during the, you know, during the week in text form, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, I am twitter.com slash volition. That's V O L 1, the numeral 1, T I O N. Uh, Brad is at Hutchison15, and Katie Zen is at Katie Zen18. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at KBMod Gaming. We have a Facebook page, we have a Discord, uh, and you should definitely check out the website, obviously, kbmod.com. Uh, we have a couple of new pieces of content up. And hopefully we'll have some build guides up, build guides soon. That would be good. Get on that. Uh, but yeah, we have some great content there. Anyway, uh, check us out on all the social media. You know where to find us. It shouldn't be that hard. Uh, we will see you next week for episode 263. Take care, everyone. Yeah! Woo! Damn!